should be live momentarily. Okay. Yeah, I think it's live. We just have a two, two, three more minutes till we start. Yes, uh, we are live. Good evening and welcome to the formal virtual hearing of the City of Cambridge Committee of Adjustment. Thank you for joining us today as we live stream from the City of Cambridge YouTube channel. If there are any issues with the technology tonight, the meeting may be recessed at the direction of the chair or host to confirm that the electronic format is performing effectively before proceeding further with our agenda. Our recording secretary host will complete a roll call of Committee of, member, committee of Adjustment members to confirm at attendance. Edmund? <coughs> Don Drackley? Here. Gerald Menenzies? Present. Francis Seward? Present. Sandy Nichols? Present. Thank you. In addition, we'd like to welcome the staff we have joining us this evening. Our recording secretary host is Edmund Carlson. Our secretary treasurer is Lisa <coughs> Jominick. And thanks today to our technology services staff, Greg Elgy, who is assisting in logistics for today's meeting. As a result of City Hall closures and social distancing guidelines being in place, in-person public attendance at the Committee of Adjustment meeting is not currently available. However, the procedures for electronic participation during the course of an emergency allow for the public to provide written submissions to the City Clerk's Office or to the Secretary Treasurer in advance of the meeting for items on the agenda. The meeting will be conducted as follows. The application will be introduced followed by a presentation by planning staff. The applicant or agent will then be invited into the meeting to explain their proposal. Following this, the floor will be open to delegates who wish to provide comments on the proposal. Once the committee has heard all of the speakers, they will deliberate and make a decision. You are welcome to stay and listen to the discussion. If you want to be informed of the decision for your application that you're here for this evening, please ensure you submit your name to Lisa Chalmanek, our secretary treasurer. Her email can be found on the presentation slides. Decisions will be mailed out within 10 days to everyone who has informed the secretary treasurer with their name and address. Please note if anyone is not satisfied with the committee's decision, you can appeal the decision to the Ontario Land Tribunal. The last date of appeal will be noted in the written decision. Information regarding appealing a decision can be located through the tribunal's website. 
And lastly, some procedural pr rules before we begin. I'm the chairperson for this hearing. All questions or comments shall be addressed through me. All individuals speaking before the committee must state their name for a recording secretary. Please speak slowly and clearly. There is a five minute time allotment permitted per speaker. And finally, a call to order to the committee. I call this meeting to order. Are there any declarations of pecuniary interest? No. No, thank you. Now we can proceed to, oh, we're not doing the minutes till next meeting. Oh no, we're, are we doing October 6 minutes? No. We ha I haven't had a chance to look at it. Me either. So are we okay with that, Edmund, that we can do that tomorrow night? Tomorrow. That okay. would be my recommendation. Three minutes Super. Chair. Thank you. Do we need a mover for that or anything? No. We'll just push it till tomorrow night. Uh, to review, Madam Chair, if there's no, uh, if there is no motion, there, there's no item, there's no motion. So. Okay, perfect. Thank you. And on the docket, we have A79-21, which is 235 Ridge Road. And Lisa has a floor. Thank you. So 235 Ridge Road. So the applicant is seeking a minor variance for lot area. Um, they have a 417 square meter lot where, they, where the requirement is 450 square meters. The minor variance will facilitate the construction of a secondary dwelling unit in the basement. Uh, this application was originally heard at the November hearing and the Committee of Adjustment sorry, of the Committee of Adjustment, and it was deferred to allow the applicant to provide a floor, a floor plan of the proposed unit. So the subject lands are located to the east side of Ridge Road between Dressage Trail and Equestrian Way. The lands are designated as low medium density residential in the city's official plan and within the R5 uh, residential zone of the city's official by of the city's zoning bylaw. Surrounding land uses are residential and R5 as well. Uh, the need to allow this type of unit is recognized in provincial policy, as well as the regional and city official plans. The applicant can meet uh, the parking requirements in driveway with the entrance in the rear. Uh, they could actually meet all of the um, provisions and requirements within the zoning bylaw for secondary dwelling, unit, dwelling units, except for the lot area. So just the aerial of the subject property with the zoning. Oh, sorry, that should... Uh, that's not the right zoning on there. That should say R5. Uh, and then the site plan at the bottom. Um, so parking um, on the right-hand side here, and then the lot area, 417 square meters. Uh, this is a site visit photo. Uh, this is the proposed floor plans um, that were submitted with the application. So I'll just leave it on here to have um, a better look for the committee. So we have a bad, um, sorry, a bedroom, um, a hobby room, living, living, dining kitchen, um, and then there's an owner-occupied area in this part, um, uh, a bathroom in this area as well. So, City of Cambridge Planning staff recommends approval of this minor variance application, subject to the one rec recommended condition within the report. Um, that is it for the presentation. Thank you. I believe we have Siobhan Tarika speaking for this application. Uh, before we can do that, can can we ask uh, staff any questions? I'm sorry, of course. Um, thank you. Uh, through the chair, a question for staff. Uh, do we know what the distance is between the two properties, the adjacent properties we're talking, you know, the, uh, the subject property of 235 Ridge Road and the next door property of 231 Ridge Road? Uh, through the chair, like the, uh, the side yard setback? Yes, yes. Um, I don't have that. Let me see here. Off the top of my head, I'm not sure if it was provided on the site plan, but most homes um, are the 1.2 meters. In some of these areas, they are allowed. Uh, let me see with this zoning. It's got some special provisions. Yeah, let me check the special provisions. I know um, 
In the R6 with the similar special provisions, they are allowed one smaller side yard, uh, okay. which would be 0.6. Um, but if you, yeah, if you want to, um, if, if there's no other questions, I'll, I'll look that up. Um, sure. Okay, thank you. Two minutes. Madam Chair. Very um, good. Uh, the, by the site plan submitted, there is a 0 0.72 side yard setback on the side with the parking and a 1.28 meter on the uh, opposite. So the 1.28 is on the side that uh, does not have the fence entrance. Is that correct? I, I'm just looking at, you know, where the prospective uh, tenant is going to have to walk through in order to get into this rear entrance. Through the chair, it would appear from the site plan that it's the, the larger pathway. You can see okay. on the drawing here, uh, it right. says pathway to basement. So this looks mm -hmm. like it's more in line with the 1.2 and this is the smaller, Logical the smaller side sense. yard. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right, thank you. Any further questions from the committee for staff? Seeing none. It looks then, Edmund, that we have Siobhan Tarika speaking for this application. Hello. Hello, welcome. Thank you for joining us, Siobhan. Hi, thank you. You have, uh, you may give a brief presentation. Thanks very much. And you have a five minute time allotment. Yes, yeah, thank you, ma'am. Uh, respected uh, chair members, uh, actually our application was uh, deferred last time pertaining to uh, the reference of the basement plan. However, just to confirm that we have been applying for one uh, committee relief option, which is that our lot area right now is 417 square meter, whereas it is required to have 450 square meters to have a secondary dwelling unit. So we would uh, like to request, we have also submitted the basement plan for the approval and reference for the committee so that they can see our basement and everything over it along with the site plan as well. Um, we are just proposing to get the like relaxation for uh, the square footage of the lot area. Uh, we the requirement is 450, as I said, but we have only 417 square meters on the property. So we would request committee if they can uh, give us a relaxation on this matter. Thanks very much, Shivang. Does the committee have any questions of Shivang? Gerald, no? No. Francis, no, Don. Okay, thanks no. very much. Thank you for joining us, Shivang. Appreciate your time this evening. Thank you. Are there any other delegations for this one? For you, Madam Chair, I have none scheduled. Thank you. All right, so I guess the uh, committee doesn't have any further comments, so we can open up the floor for discussion. Madam Chair, based on uh, the fact there are uh, no other delegations and the applicant has provided a site plan like was requested, mm -hmm. I move that this application be uh, approved. Thank you. Do we have a seconder? I'll uh, second. The... Oh, Carol and I will both second them. <laughs> Thank you, Francis. I'll, I'll put Francis as noted. Is there any discussion on this? Yes, Madam uh, Chair. Right. You know, you know, we're sensitive about uh, reduced lot sizes mm -hmm. as per the bylaw, and we know the bylaw is under review, but it's it, the new bylaw has not been approved by council, so we have to go what's written in the existing bylaw, which is 450 square meter lot size. However, um, this appears to be close, and please note that at our November the 10th meeting, we approved a similar application at 292. Ridge Road, which had a lot size of 433 square meters. So we are being consistent if we agree to approve this application. Thanks very much, Don. Uh, to, through the chair, uh, I'd like to add one other condition, if possible, and that is that this development be limited to one bedroom. Is that Ma what's Madam Chair, I, I, I agree with that. I'm, 
I'm not totally comfortable with this room called a hobby, hobby room. room. I know. Where was it? I know it does. It doesn't appear to have a window, and it doesn't appear to have a closet. But uh, you put a bed in there, and it becomes a second bedroom. And if that's the case, then Lisa, I would presume an additional parking spot would be required. If I can, certainly, oh, go ahead, please. Go ahead. Uh, through the chair. Sorry, Don, that's correct. Um, we require one parking space per bedroom. So the, the total would require three parking spaces. And the application as submitted is for one bedroom, correct? Okay. Well, so, but I agree with Gerald that, that that because of this hobby room thing, I, I, I like the idea of putting that as a second condition. All right. I think it's limited to one bedroom. All right. Do we need to make a? I think for instance, I think we're okay with it that way, right? That that we we instead of that there being one condition, there's two conditions, and the wording on that second condition is that it be limited to one bedroom. Correct. Uh, through, through the chair, for formality, I, I, I will move that we approve this application with two conditions, as noted. Perfect. That good at your end, Lisa, do you think, Ed, on verbiage? Uh, through you, Madam Chair. Um, I would, the wording that I have is that, this, that the additional unit be restricted to a single bedroom. Perfect. Thank you. Through, right. through the chair. Madam Sorry. Chair. Sorry. Oh. On, on Lisa's of, first. On a point of order, I made the motion to approve it without a second condition. We didn't vote on that. Uh, Gerald brought up the suggestion of, of, of including a second motion. Do we, now, my, my question is, of staff, do, do we have to somehow deal with my motion before we get to Gerald's motion? Yes, we do. Through the chair, yes, you, you put a motion on the floor first, so we, we do need to deal with that one before we can put the second one on. Yeah. All right, thanks for that clarity. I appreciate that. So the motion on the floor is uh, to, to approve as presented with one condition. And I'll ask you to vote on that now. And then if we move to the second. So all in favor or, or, or against, please state your, Gerald, if you could go first. Uh, I'm not in favor of the motion. I would like the amended motion. Thank you. Francis? Yeah, I am not in favor of the motion. Thank you. And Dawn? I'm not in favor of the motion. Thank you. Can we have a new motion on the floor, please? Uh, through the chair, I move that we approve this application with two conditions. One, as outlined in the staff recommendation report, and the second, that this development be limited to one bedroom. Perfect. Thank you. If we, we need a seconder for that, right? I'll second the motion. Thank you, Francis. All in favor of the new motion as presented. Dawn? Madam Chair, I'm in favor. Thank you, Francis. Through the chair, I am in favor. And Gerald. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Wonderful, carried. Moving on, we have A80 slash 21, which is 86 Home Street. And it's all yours, Lisa. Thank you. Okay, so this applicant is seeking um, another secondary dwelling unit. Um, so they are looking for, um, they're requesting 50% 50, 50 of the home's uh, gross floor area, whereas the bylaw requires it can only be a maximum of 40%. This variance will um, help the applicant go through the building permit process to legalize an existing secondary dwelling unit in the basement that was already built when they bought the home recently. This application was originally heard at the, at the November uh, meeting of the Committee of Adjustment, and it was deferred to allow um, some further review. So the subject property is located on the west side of Home Street, uh, north of Fox Ridge Drive at Chipman Street. The property is designated as low medium density residential in the city's official plan and is zoned R5 uh, residential in the zoning bylaw. The, a provision, the provision of accessory residential units is one measure to help with providing more affordable homes of housing within the city. The need to allow this type of unit is recognized in provincial policy as well as the regional and official plans. 
The official plan encourages a range and mix of housing types that are affordable and safe. Accessory units may be established where appropriate parking arrangements can be accommodated, is subordinate to the main dwelling unit, and that the accessory unit is compatible within the neighborhood. The applicant can meet uh, the, um, all the requirements um, and parking in the driveway uh, and carport area. And the secondary dwelling unit will have no visual impact from the street. Uh, so there's the aerial and the zoning. Um, there's uh, two floor plans here. So you have the main floor um, and the basement floor plan. Uh, the basement, um, as I understand, would be what the secondary dwelling unit is. Um, at the previous November 10th Committee of Adjustment meeting, um, the committee felt that the application was uh, premature to be coming forward uh, and wanted some more time to review. Um, I did want to kind of clarify there was some confusion on the steps of, of building permit um, and what the process kind of looks like. So the applicant is trying to get a building permit right now to legalize this unit. Um, and how it works is when you apply for a building permit, um, when it gets input, it gets reviewed by, um, by planning for zoning compliance. So before it gets reviewed for any building code items um, that would look at things like floor plan or safety, um, it, needs to, it needs to meet zoning. So if it doesn't meet zoning, um, then there's two options. They can either change the drawings of what they're proposing, uh, and then they kind of they reapply. So the the building permit review process actually gets paused if they don't meet zoning. So they change drawings and comply and resubmit, and it goes through the whole process. Second option is they can apply for a minor variance. Um, once that minor variance, if approved, then again they go back to the building permit process, and then it and then it'll be finally reviewed by building. So I just wanted to clarify um, and just give give a kind of brief overview on what the applicant is trying to do and why they can't go through building permit first. And in terms of uh, floor plan and things like that, um, um, it, the zoning, what we're looking at, we're, we're looking at the use of land. Um, we're not necessarily looking at uh, the floor plan itself. That's something that would be taken through building code. So this is a um, just another um, photo that the applicant submitted of, of the home facing from the front. So I believe the main entrance um, of the dwelling is the one up here. And then the uh, secondary dwelling unit entrance is under here. So City of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval of this minor variance application subject to the one recommendation. And that is it for the presentation. Thank you. Are there any questions to staff? Uh, Madam Chair, I have a quick question at least. Sure. Uh, Lisa, do I recall that when we heard this application in November, there was a neighbor that opposed it? Through the chair, uh, I think there, there were a couple. I don't know if there was one or two. There definitely was at least one person uh, that did call in. Um, I'm thinking maybe there was a couple that did call in. So we'll see, we'll see next if we still have any uh, opposition. Mm -hmm. Right. Gerald, I think you're on mute if you're trying to say something. Thank you. Uh, so through the me. chair, I, I, I just have a clarification uh, that I need from staff. Uh, on page four of 12, where we're talking about the entrance, uh, it's suggesting that the entrance is going to be, yes, direct entrance through the side door. And uh, when we look at the plan submitted and the photo submitted, it looks like that entrance is actually a shared entrance through the carport. Can you just clarify that? Is it a direct entrance or is it a shared entrance? Through the, through the chair. I'm, I'm in that. Um, I meant that it's direct. Oops, I'm going the wrong way in the presentation. <laughs> direct to the unit. Um, my understanding is that the, the one unit entrance is here and the main is here. If it was shared, then they would both be going through the same door. Okay. Yeah. So the, um, the zoning bylaw allows for either or. Okay. Okay. No, that's interesting because I, you know, I would think that they park and then go through the side entrance. Uh, the homeowner would do that as well. 
but that's good. That's good to know. Are there any other questions? No, seeing none. I believe we have Laura Gillespie speaking for this application. Hello. Hi, Laura. Thank you for joining us this evening. We are taking a look Thank at your you. application. You're very welcome and you have five minutes. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Laura Gillespie and I am the new homeowner of 86 Home Street. I'm returning to the committee this evening following a deferral decision at the November variance meeting. During my five minutes, I plan to address both the committee and delegates' concerns from the November meeting, as well as explain why I've come forward to this committee asking for this minor variance. After reviewing the recording of the November meeting, I understand that it may not have been clear as to what we were asking the committee to approve. So I thank you for your patience as I try to be as clear as I possibly can. The zoning bylaw today does not allow secondary dwelling units to occupy more than 40% of the total floor area of the home. I'm asking to be granted a minor variance request for an additional 10% of the floor area in the basement apartment. I'm here simply because my home is a bungalow and the square footage is split 50% up and 50% down. If I owned a two-story home, I wouldn't need to be here before this committee. If the minor variance is approved, I will then be allowed to begin the permit process, like Lisa was mentioning, with the City of Cambridge, at which time I'll be working closely with the City to ensure we're bringing this non-conforming basement apartment up to the requirements of the Ontario Building Code, including parking requirements and fire safety. So to be clear, by approving this minor variance, it will not legalize the basement apartment. It will just simply allow us to move forward in the permit process. I'd like to additionally outline the city's support in our request. So not only has the city staff recommended the approval of this application, but the city of Cambridge is currently in process of updating this specific bylaw in the zoning bylaw amendments. The update would exclude basements in the additional residential units from the 40% square footage limitation. While it's exciting, it was exciting to participate in the public presentation and to participate in the special council meeting yesterday where the mayor and, and city council met to learn more about these proposed changes. Unfortunately, the proposed zoning bylaw amendment isn't scheduled to be released until the middle of next year. Next, I'd like to address the delegate concerns last time. Since purchasing this home, we've learned that there are homes on the street that are currently operating illegal rentals and the neighbors are concerned, as am I. I wanna make it clear that we are responsible landlords who are longtime Hessler residents operating in the best interest of our community and providing a much needed rental unit in a low inventory market. I'm looking forward to being a present landlord in the community. We'll have a strict review process for our tenant applications and look forward to bringing in equally responsible tenants who will care for the home and respect the neighborhood. I'm a 15 year Hessler resident who takes really great pride in our my community. Um, since moving here as a single woman in 2006, I've had the privilege to build a beautiful family here and includes bringing some of my extended family to buy homes like my sisters and my mother-in-law. Unfortunately, if I were in the same position when I first came to this community with today's housing prices, I would not have been able to afford to buy here. I would have needed to rent and with the lack of availability, it would have been near impossible to create the same life I live here today in Hessler. I bring this up for two reasons. First, the rental inventory north of the 401 is extremely scarce, and we're looking forward to providing a home to a family. But secondly, I, I wanted to share why we've invested in this home and in the street and in this neighborhood. It's a scary time in real estate and housing affordability, and I'm not sure where the future is going to take us in housing. I have two young sons. And we decided to purchase this home as an investment in Hessler because we want to ensure our kids and our aging parents have a future in this community. This basement unit is a beautiful space. It's close to grocery, transit, excellent schools. It also provides outdoor space for tenants to enjoy, which is a huge bonus. It's well suited to a young couple looking to get a good start, someone downsizing, or even a single parent needing an affordable home to raise their children. In closing, I just want to thank the City of Cambridge staff for the hours spent working with me on this minor variance request. 
And I want to thank the committee for your time and consideration for our 10% floor space increase so we can begin the permit process. If there are any questions or concerns from committees or delegates, I would be happy to address them. Thank you again. Thanks very much, Laura. Does the committee have any questions of Laura? No. Seeing none. Do we have anyone uh, joining us for this, Edmund? For the chair, there is no one scheduled. Okay, thanks very much. Super. You're welcome to stay and listen, Lisa, as we work through it. Uh, Madam Chair, could I ask staff a quick question? Sure you can. Uh, Lisa, the one or two people at the previous meeting in November, the residents who voiced concerns about this project, this proposal, would they have been informed of tonight's meeting? Through the chair, we would we would have recirculated um, any application. So if they were in the catchments, they would have been notified. What if they weren't in the catchments, though? What if they were a little bit up the street? The fact that they were at the meeting and made a delegation, wouldn't that put them on the list? Uh, through the chair, yeah, they, they should have been notified. I, I might just uh, refer to Ned, um, who would have sent the notification letters out just to confirm if they would have been uh, sent the new notifications. Through the chair, I would have to check my email lists, but the procedure as it should operate is that delegates will be included on the list for notices of decision, which would uh, be anyone who's asked for a notice of decision would be circulated on every appearance following a, a deferral. Thank you, Edmund. I, I, I'm just asking because I don't know whether the fact that uh, no other residents have any comments about this is because they didn't get a notice or because they simply don't care anymore. Uh, and that's impossible for us to, uh, to, to, to decide except by looking at the circulation list. So uh, I'm going to just accept the fact that we don't have any uh, other delegations and base my decision accordingly. Questions of staff before we move for a motion? Uh, I'm prepared to make a motion. Thanks, Gerald. Go ahead, please. Uh, through the chair, I move that we approve this application with the one condition outlined in the staff recommendation report. Thank you. A seconder? Yes, I'll second the motion through the chair. Yes. Thank you, Francis. Any further discussion? I'll bring it to a vote. All in favor as proposed with the one condition. We're voting on A80 slash 21. Francis. I am in favor of the motion. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you. And Dawn. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you. Carried unanimously. We're moving on to A8221, which is 107 Flockhart. Thank you. Um, okay, so 107 Flockhart Road. The applicant um, is requesting a minor variance for a one bedroom basement secondary dwelling unit. Uh, they are deficient in lot area and lot frontage. The requirement is 450 square meters for lot area and 11 meter frontage. And what the applicant is requesting is 324.49 square meters for lot frontage and, or sorry, for lot area and frontage of 9.6 meters. Uh, I did want to note that the initial notice of hearing and breakdown report had an error um, in terms of the lot area being requested, um, and there was an added parking variance on there. Um, the lot area, um, I apologize, it was 113 something square meters. Uh, that was actually the deficiency, not exactly what they are requesting. So there's just a typo in there. Thanks, Lisa. Any questions? So, oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. No, 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 I'm way ahead of myself. Um, so oh, one second here. Okay, so the subject property is located south of Wheeler Drive and on the east side of Flockhart Road. The property is currently developed with a single detached dwelling with an attached one car garage. The lands are, are zoned R6 RS1 in the city's zoning bylaw and low medium density residential in the city's official plan. 
The R6 RS1 zone permits detached and semi-detached dwellings. The applicant is proposing to build a one bedroom basement unit. The total number of parking, parking required for the entire property, so that's the main home uh, plus the one bedroom basement unit is two, which the applicant can meet in the garage and driveway. No changes are being proposed to the front exterior of the home. So the provision of accessory residential units is one measure to help with providing more affordable homes of housing, more affordable forms of housing within the city. The need to allow this type of unit is recognized in provincial policy as well as regional and city official plans. The official plan encourages a range and mix of housing types that are affordable and safe. Accessory units may be established where appropriate parking arrangements can be accommodated, are subordinate to the main dwelling and compatible with the existing neighborhood. Uh, so the zoning photo on the left there, the R6 RS1 zone um, and an aerial. And then at the bottom is the site plan. So the total lot area, uh, that's what they're looking for here is 324.49 square meters. Uh, we're just showing the two parking spaces there, but they meet the parking. So that's not, um, that's not what's being on the table for a variance here. Um, and then the 9.6 meter frontage. This is a floor plan uh, that the applicant provided. So they have a, uh, a master bedroom, uh, the kitchen area and the bathroom in here. And that is just a site visit photo. I believe the entrance is, uh, they're proposing a side entrance, I believe on this one. So it'd be um, in the side yard here. And oops. So I think it would be somewhere in this area. Can you see my mouse when right. I'm on here? Okay, yes. yeah. So again, here. So City of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval um, of this revised variance application and we're of the opinion that the changes are minor, no further circulation be required under the Planning Act. Um, and that's just to acknowledge the, uh, the breakdown um, um, typo on there. So planning staff recommend uh, approval of the application as amended subject to the one condition outlined in the recommendation report. Thank you, Lisa. We have George Cedra speaking for this application. Jeff? Oh, um, sorry. I, I have a again. question of staff. Um, Lisa, on page three of the staff report, under minimum lot area, it says no variance were no, it says no variance requested for 417 meters squared. Yeah, this is 324 meters squared. So what's the difference? Through the chair. No, you're correct. I think that's just a typo. On are you are you speaking in the the graph or the table? The table. Yeah. Yeah. The variance requested um, is three twenty four point four nine. Thank you. Thanks, Don. Are there any other questions of committee before no, we? That, no? That's a good question. That's what I had. Wonderful. Thank you. So we do have George Cedra speaking for this application. If we could please wait while our host invites the applicant into the meeting. Uh, George? Yes. Hello, George. Welcome. Yes, hello. Thank you. Can you hear us okay, George? Yes, I do. Yes. Wonderful. Thanks very much for joining us. We are here to take a look at your application and you have five minutes to share your thoughts with us. Sure. Okay, good evening, everybody. Uh, this is a small application to uh, have a small unit. I can barely hear them. Yeah, okay. I'll try to speak higher. Oh, level. much better. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. <clears throat> so this is a small application for uh, turning the basement to a small, very small, tiny unit in the basement. 
I did read the report by staff, and we really appreciate the staff uh, recommendation for approval of the application. Uh, we also did uh, did kind of us the area and uh, ask the neighbors, and we submitted to the city uh, two uh, letters that they are in support of the application. Uh, we sent them to city staff uh, earlier about maybe two weeks ago. We we are you know we are really will be really appreciate if the committee uh, accepted this application. Uh, the owner, Mr. Uh, uh, Aisha K Christian really would like to have uh, someone helping him with uh, mortgage and stuff. And the, he's, it's a young family and probably will fit another small young family or maybe one person. And with the, the amenity area in the backyard is is large enough to accommodate uh, everybody. So I would really appreciate if the committee accepted uh, our application. Thanks very much for your time, George. Does the committee have any questions of the applicant? No. I have one question, George. You mentioned it might be an idea for a small family or a single person. You do realize it's just a one bedroom though, right? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, thanks for your time this evening. Do we have anyone else speaking on this one, Edmund? Thank you, Madam Chair, and none are scheduled. No, thank you. Alrighty. Are there any questions of staff before we move to a motion? I'd like to make a motion, Madam Chair. Certainly. Thanks, Don. I move that this application be refused. I think the difference between 324 square meter lot area and the required 450, uh, no matter what the bylaw may say next year, is simply too great. Thank you. Any to, to the chair, I'd just like to add a few more comments. Uh, I, I do support the motion, uh, and I'd like to add the following comments. Uh, this again, our committee has been fairly consistent with R6 zones where we have special provisions that have further intensified a high intensity residential uh, zone. Um, to so we, we're being consistent here. The other thing is I'll say, in my opinion, this uh, application does not meet uh, three of the four tests required. Thank you, Gerald. If we could have a mo uh, motion. I think we still need the motion. Um, yeah, I think Dawn started it, but then we didn't. But then there was another well, my, motion. Madam Chair, my motion was to refuse. And then yeah, I, I'm sorry, I, I, I was premature in adding the reasons why, but that's, that's okay. Okay. Do Can we I have a speak or, uh, or that's not a possibility? Not at this. Point no, point. it's not possible at this time. I'm okay. sorry. I will second the motion. Please. Thank you, Francis. So we have it on the floor. Is there further discussion for so that Ed's can take enough notes there? You're good at that end, Ed? For cause? For you, Madam Chair. Um, the notes I have is our refusal of the application as it is not considered minor, does not meet three of the tests, and that the committee has been specific with our site, our six zones with uh, site specific provision. Wonderful, thank you. If we could have a vote then, Francis? Through the chair, I'm in favor of refusal. Thank you, Gerald. And through the chair, I support the refusal. Thank you, and Dawn? Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the refusal. Thank you. It is denied. Failed. I don't know what word to use. All right. On the docket is eight, A83-21, which is 32 Weir Street. Thank you. Uh, 32 Weir Street. Um, this is a another uh, secondary dwelling unit application. Um, so the applicant is requesting a lot area of 416 square meters, whereas the, requir the requirement is 450, and a rear yard setback of 4.76 meters, whereas the requirement is seven meters. 
uh, the variances will facilitate the construction of a basement secondary dwelling unit. Um, I did want to note there was an, a typo on this one as well uh, for the notice of hearing and breakdown report. It had the, re the required rear yard setback at um, six meters uh, when it's actually seven, but there's no change to, to the actual variance and what the applicant, okay. applicant is looking for. Um, Okay, so the subject lands are located east of Baldwin Drive and north of Henwood Drive on the north side of Weir Street. The property is currently developed with a single detached dwelling uh, with an attached two car garage. The subject lands are zoned R4 residential in the city zoning bylaw and low medium density residential in the city's official plan. The applicant is proposing a secondary dwelling unit in the basin of the current home with access from the rear from the rear, <laughs> the variances are to recognize a deficient lot area for, and for a reduced rear yard setback that is needed for a staircase to the basement. This is a, um, a floor plan of what the applicant has submitted. Um, so the parking is shown on here, the entrance. So the pathway would be, sorry, to this side here, um, pathway to basement. And then the variance that they're looking for is the rear yard. So uh, the requirement is 7.5 meters for a rear yard setback, but we do allow a 0.5 meter encroachment for staircases. Um, so that would bring it down to seven meters um, and they could uh, only meet 4.76 meters. And then the second variance um, that they are requesting is the minimum lot area of 416 meters. Uh, this is a proposed floor plan that the applicant has submitted. So again, this would be in the back, the entrance from the rear. So this is the front of the home, the entrance they'd uh, walk around the side, enter through the back into the living dining area, uh, bathroom, and a bedroom. And sorry, in the small kitchen in here. And this is a site visit photo. So City of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval of the revised variance application and are of the opinion that the changes are minor and no further circulation be required. Um, planning staff recommend approval of the application as amended subject to the one condition outlined in the recommendation report. Thanks, Lisa. Does the committee have any questions of staff? Doesn't look like it? Okay. Thank you. And it looks as though we have Shivan Tarika joining us again on this one, Edwin. Is that right? That is correct. All right. Absolutely. Please be patient while our host invites the applicant into the meeting. Hello, Shivang. Hello, hi, good evening again. Hello, Shivang. thanks for joining us again. You've Thank got you. the floor and you've got five minutes. Okay, thanks a lot. So respected chair, uh, this project is 32 Beer Street. Uh, we are actually proposing uh, two minor variances or release. One is actually for the lot area. The requirement again is 400 and square, 450 square meter uh, of lots area is required. However, we have 416 square meter on the site. And the second thing that we are requesting is the rear yard setback. The rear yard setback requirement as per the zoning bylaw is seven meters. Uh, whereas we have uh, 4.76 uh, meter on this property. Earlier, we were actually planning to make a, like a straight below grade entrance, which is like perpendicular to the wall, but it was taking, it was encroaching too much into the rear yard setback. So we changed our idea. And then as you see the site plan and the drawing, we actually went now to parallel to the wall condition, stating that we reduce uh, uh, the, the variance number. And so that the least amount of number, we can get it for the entrance. And now we are still, uh, coming at 4.76 meter however requirement is seven meters so uh, so respected chair we have we request you to please allow us uh, and uh, grant us the relief for these two variances one is for the lot area and the other is the area setback thank you thank you 
Does the committee have any questions of Siobhan? Seeing none. Super. Thank you for joining us this evening, Siobhan. Appreciate your Thank time. You. Thank you. Are there any questions of staff before we go for a motion? Oh, is there anybody else coming on for this one as a delegation, Ed? Uh, I have just received notice to you, Madam Chair, that we have a call. Okay. Ticket, Greg's working on bringing him in. That is correct, Madam Chair. Okay. Uh, Madam Chair, I have a Jason Eos. Super. All right. Hello, Jason. Hello, yeah, Jason. Hello. Uh, hello. hello, welcome to the Committee of Adjustment. I believe you're here to speak on the application for Weir Street. Yeah, yeah. If I you just, could, um, sure, if you could please share your name and address. Uh, yeah, my name is uh, Jason Eos uh, with uh, 48 Porter Crescent, so just opposing on the back side. Okay, thank you. And you can go ahead. You've got five minutes. Uh, yeah. Um, no, thank you very much for uh, for hearing uh, my concerns about the uh, the potential approval. Um, having the area and being in the area, you know, it's a very quiet area, and there is not a lot of room behind the houses. So, seeing the amount of potential encroachment um, with the stairway, uh, the backyards are not very large. It doesn't leave a lot of room for you know whether there's gatherings and the potential for traffic at you know all hours of the day. Um, into the backyard and not knowing, you know, what time people could be coming or going and uh, causing disturbance would, would just be the main concern that we have about, uh, about this proposal. And that's all from us. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Does the committee have any questions for the fellow? I have a quick question. Sure. Uh, Jason, what kind of fence do you have that separates your property on Porter from this property on Weir? Uh, it is a wood fence. How tall? Uh, I believe it's it's either it's at least six, just a little okay. over six. But their their house, I believe, sits a bit higher. So um, from the like from the backyard, um, you can see closer into my backyard from theirs. So the grading uh, that house sits higher on the grade. Okay, thank you. Thanks very much. Any other questions for Jason? No. Thank you for taking the time to join us this evening, Jason. We do appreciate it. It's important to us Great. that, that uh, neighbors participate whenever possible. Great. Thank you very much. You bet. All right. Is there uh, anybody else coming on, Edmund? Uh, Madam Chair, I have uh, no one scheduled. Okay. Thank you. All right. Do we have any further questions of staff before we have a motion? No. Thank you. If I could have a motion, please. Through the chair, I move that we accept this application with one more condition. In addition to the condition outlined in the staff recommendation report, we add that this development be restricted 
to one bedroom. Thank you. Do I have a seconder for that? Madam Chair, sure I'll second that. Okay, Don. Thank you. Francis's voice Sorry, is Francis. <laughs> super. Any further conversation on this one before we vote? I, I, the only thing I'd like to say is, you know, this is an R4 zone. And uh, uh, yes, the, the amenity space in the back is somewhat restricted, but I see that they don't have a deck and perhaps the homeowner could be putting a deck on, on, on the top floor. But uh, other than that, I mean, it, it, it is, it does meet the test. Okay, thank you. All right, if we could have a vote then, all in favor of accepting it with the additional third condition of only no, it's having two, two sorry. conditions. Oh, was it only two? Sorry, there's the second condition adding it of uh, some clarifying one bedroom. Right. Thank you. Okay. All in favor of the motion as presented, Dawn. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion Thank as presented. Thank you, Francis. Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, and Gerald. Yeah, through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion with the two conditions. Super. Thank you. Carried. Now we're coming up on 500 Conestoga Parkway, which happens to be A84 slash 21. Thank you. Sorry, I couldn't unmute myself. Um, that should say Conestoga Boulevard. Um, okay, so this applicant is, um, this is an industrial property. So the applicant is seeking a uh, minor variance uh, for a storage setback um, of three meters, um, whereas the requirement uh, is 12 meters. Um, and they're also looking for an interpretation of rear yard to be the frontage of Conestoga Boulevard, whereas the rear yard is the north portion of the property. Um, so I just want to mention that, so originally uh, this application, we identified that the rear yard is only, uh, storage is only allowed in the rear yard, um, and they already have it in this area. So that the required variance or in the zoning bylaw is actually only 3.5 meters, not, it wouldn't be 12 meters for that setback. So the minor variance will facilitate an internal um, realignment and repaving of the existing parking area on the property. The subject property has an active site plan application under file SP 3821. Um, like I mentioned, after further review, staff have identified an additional minor variance that would be required um, as shown in the previous slide. So staff are recommending that this minor change, that this is a minor change as there are no changes to the plans itself, only an interpretation and recirculation not be required. So the property is located north of Bishop Street between Collier McMullen Drive and Conestoga Boulevard. It is a large 11 hectare industrial property with a frontage uh, with three frontages. There's a frontage on Conestoga Boulevard on Bishop Street and on Collier McMullen Drive. The subject lands are designated business industrial in the city's official plan and M3 industrial in the city's zoning bylaw. Lands designated business industrial are traditional industrial parks that allow for a range of industrial and office uses. The applicant is proposing to bring their outdoor storage closer to their frontage and requesting a three meter uh, setback. So section 8.5.3.4.3 of the official plan permits outdoor storage within this designation if it is located in the rear yard and screened from public view. The property, as I mentioned before, has street frontage on three streets, Conestoga Boulevard, Bishop Street North, and Collier McMullen Drive. The official frontage would be the shortest lot frontage, which would be Bishop Street. So just with my mouse here. So officially, according to the zoning bylaw, the frontage would be this part of the property. Um, and you can see here in the aerial too, which would make the back part here, the official rear yard. And as you can see from the aerial, it's very limited in space on what the rear um, yard could be. Um, this would be, this is where the current storage is. Um, uh, this would be considered the exterior side yard, which is on Conestoga, 
Conestoga Boulevard, um, and it has been operating more so as a rear yard. Um, as the site is currently designed, the official rear yard would not have sufficient space to store any items. As such, um, staff requested the additional minor variance for the interpretation of the frontage um, to be along Conestoga, uh, sorry, for the frontage along Conestoga Boulevard to be considered the rear yard, only for the purposes of outdoor storage in relation to this application. This is the site plan drawing here too. So this would be Conestoga Boulevard here, or sorry, this, this street is actually a, uh, an unnamed street that almost operates like a private road. And then there's a grassed area with a multi-use trail and then there's Conestoga Boulevard. So um, the setback is, is quite large. I think it's more than 30 meters from the actual um, road portion that cars travel on. So right now their storage is somewhere uh, probably along here, and they are looking to uh, bring it closer to the road. <clears throat> this is a site visit photo um, from the, this would be the road, um, that unnamed road, and again, Conestoga Boulevard would be over here. Uh, this is what they are currently storing in an industrial area. So the lands currently do have outdoor storage um, that aren't that does don't appear to be screened from the road. So, oh, uh, city of planning, uh, city of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval of this revised variance application. Are of the opinion that changes are minor and no further circulation <clears throat> be required. Uh, and City of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval of this minor uh, variance application as amended, subject to the five conditions listed in the recommendation report. Um, and I did just want to mention that um, some of the conditions in the recommendation report um, are uh, approval of the site plan that they're, they currently have an active uh, file on, um, and then some screening, which would be either through uh, uh, fencing that we have on here. Uh, that's it for the presentation. Mm -hmm. Any questions of staff before we? Uh, I don't have questions, but I j just a comment uh, um, for staff. I, I recall that uh, Conestoga Boulevard used to be one way, like you went one way up one and one way down, and then you sort of at the end of the boulevard, you, you it it joined up. And uh, I think it was about 10 years ago that uh, the city uh, got rid of the one way. And I think this is how this opportunity has come about. Does that uh, look like it's in your records? Uh, through the chair, I, d I don't have uh, access to that information. I did follow up with transportation to see if there was any intention on this uh, unnamed road to be developed into something and there was, there's no plans at this time. So it, it would continue to operate as, as not the main road. Okay. Yeah, no, Madam Chair, Gerald's recollection is correct. It used to be a couplet and um, a, a one-way couplet. So what we now call Conestoga Boulevard was one way northbound and this unnamed road was one way, one way southbound. So they, when, when they made Conestoga Boulevard two-way, they didn't need that unnamed road anymore. And uh, <clears throat> that's where we get to where we are today with this property. Thank you. Any Is other questions? Here? I have one, one question of staff. Sure. Okay. Um, I see that they'll be required to do a planting strip. Um, and I don't see any of that in the um, conditions. So is that sort of included in the conditions that that's all going to be part of it? They will have to put a planting strip and we don't need to actually specify that they will? Through the chair, that's something because they have an active site plan. Um, okay. That's something that they would uh, likely need to put in anyways through site plan. Okay. So that can be more so determined on what type of, um, like what type of shrubbery and whatnot is appropriate would be through the site plan. Okay, thank you. Is it ever specified that maybe put in trees instead of just fountain grass? Or? <laughs> <laughs> sure. 
Yeah. These would be great. Yeah. Uh, through the trade, there are some specs. I'm, I don't have them off the top of my head on what would be required. Just curious. Thank you very much. Great. It looks like we've got Madeline Carter waiting in the wings to speak to this application. Hello, Madeline. Yep. Hi, Madeline. Thanks for joining us this evening. Welcome. You're speaking to A8421, which is 500 Conestoga Parkway. You have got Correct. five minutes. Thank you. Um, hello, my name is Madeline Carter. I am with GM Blue Plan Engineering. I'm a civil engineer and I'm working with Tenneco um, on this project who are the tenants owner of the facility. Um, so just a little bit of background. Um, thank you for the presentation, but uh, just a bit more background. Uh, Tenneco is a tier one automotive manufacturing facility. Uh, so they make exhaust systems um, and they do employ about 1300 people in Cambridge. Um, and as you might have noted, the property is quite large. It's about 11 hectares um, and this storage area is pretty small um, with respect to the whole site. It is only about one and a half percent, um, it's about 1,500 square meters, uh, where we're proposing the uh, variance area. So just something to keep in note. Um, and as mentioned, also we are in the middle of an SPA uh, site plan approval process with the city um, for some other alterations on site. We are moving the fence um, that is currently on site. And as we move the fence, the storage will get moved as well. It'll just um, provide better operation of their loading bays on that side of the building. Um, and so they'll be able to move around a bit better. So that's sort of the, the reason why, and that's why this was triggered um, through the site plan application process, uh, the variance was required. So um, we have reviewed everything and um, we have spoken with Edmund a couple times just concerning some of the conditions. And we do have a question on condition number three. Um, it was recommended that a solid wall or fence is recommended for screening. Um, in discussions with Tenneco, the client, um, they need to have a secure fence. So it has to be chain link fence with barbed wire on the top. Um, it is considered the tier one automotive manufacturing facility. So they do require that. So one thing that we had discussed was um, if we can deal with the type of screening through the site plan process, that way it'll give us a bit more time to figure out what the best way is to provide the screening because we can't have a typical um, wood board fence that would be um, required. So that was just one thing we would just like an alteration to that um, condition if possible, um, that we can confirm the screening through the site plan process. Um, that's I think about it. So thank you very much for all your time and I can answer any questions if anybody has any. Super, thanks Madeline. Any questions of the agent? Um, no, to, to the chair, I, I believe Tenneco is owned by Moog Automotive. And uh, so as such, it would be classified as a tier two or is it a tier three automotive? Yes, I'm not 100% sure. <laughs> uh, I don't work at the facility, but uh, that might be correct. Okay. So I, I, I think the request is reasonable uh, through the chair. What does staff think about that? It's condition number three. Through the chair, um, I would be comfortable with um, changing the wording on that to have the fence be provided um, along the storage area uh, up to, for like through the approval of the site plan. They, um, like the applicant did mention, uh, that would give them a little bit more flexibility to work with the planner on, um, on that file to kind of come up with what is the best solution. Madam Chair, um, one, one possible suggestion is, is, is to take out the word solid fence or wall and replace it with something like an appropriate security fence, which then gives the, um, the designers the flexibility of putting in the kind of fence that's required based on their industrial classif classification. Well, I like broader that. stroke. Yeah, it's a broader stroke. Any further questions of Madeline before? No, seeing none. Madeline, thanks so much for joining us this evening. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Bye for now. And do we have any further questions before we ask for a motion? Seeing 
seeing none, if I can have a motion noting the amended condition three. Well, Madam Chair, with that amended condition three, I move that this application be approved. Thank you. A seconder, please. Through the chair, I'll second that motion. Thank you, Gerald. Any further discussion? Or do you want to kind of wordsmith that third condition? Yeah, just yeah. Madam Chair, just to be more specific, the end of condition number three says for screening purposes. And I don't think that that's, that's what they're going to get with the security fence. You know, screening means you can't see through it. Right. I, I would just say security. I would just call it a security fence. Yeah, I'd say, I'd say you know. Especially when the fence, they've got to put barbed wire take, on it. So, yeah. Take, take, take for screening purposes out and replace solid fence or wall with appropriate security fence. Thank you. Right. Ed, you got that okay? <laughs> uh, bribe in the with back. your permission, Madam Chair, I would read back the condition as. Thank you. That an appropriate security fence uh, shall be provided along the storage area facing Conestoga Boulevard. You got it. You got it. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. If so, we have ready to vote. No further questions. If I could vote in favor, if I could have a vote in favor of the motion, we'll start with Dawn. Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion as amended. Thank you, Francis. Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion as amended. Thank you, and Gerald. Uh, through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion with the amendment to condition three. Wonderful. Carried unanimously. Thanks very much, folks. We're now moving on to, how fast can I scroll? A8521, which is 91 Yates Avenue. Thank you. Sorry, just pulling up my notes. Okay, so this applicant is requesting uh, a minor variance for lot area and frontage. The minor variance will facilitate the construction of a one bedroom secondary dwelling unit in the basement. The applicant can meet the parking requirements in the garage and driveway. No changes are being proposed to the exterior of the home. Um, and the entrance for the unit will be from the rear. So they are looking for a lot area of 326.39 square meters and a frontage of 9.58 meters. So the subject property is located west of Branchton Road, east of Fox Meadow Road, and on the north side of Yates Ave. The property is currently developed with a single detached dwelling with an attached one-car garage. The lands are zoned R6 in the city's zoning bylaw and low-medium density residential in the city's official plan. The R6 zone permits single detached dwellings. The applicant is proposing to build the one bedroom basement unit. The total number of parking spaces required for the main home and, and unit um, is two, which the applicant can meet. The provision of um, accessory residential units is one measure to help with providing more affordable, more affordable forms of housing within the city. The need to allow this type of unit is recognized in provincial policy as well as regional and city official plans. The official plan encourages a range of housing types that are affordable and safe. Accessory units may be established where appropriate parking arrangements can be accommodated as subordinate to the main dwelling unit and that the accessory unit is compatible with the existing neighborhood. So that is the R6 zone there on the left, um, an aerial photo on the right, and then a site plan. Um, so a nine point uh, 58 meter frontage, 326.38 square meter total um, lot area. So they're proposing, so the, sorry, the front of the home is here. So the driveway garage um, existing um, entrance would be for the main dwelling in here. And then there is a entrance being proposed in the rear for the secondary dwelling unit. Uh, this is a site visit photo of the property. So City of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval of this minor variance application subject to the requested conditions.
but I, sh I thought I shut my whole thing down for a second. Sorry. There we go. Any questions of staff before we have further discussion? Gerald, you're muted if you're talking. Sorry about that. That's okay. Uh, through, the, through the chair, I do have a, a question for staff. Um, we see the zoning, we see a site plan. Uh, is there a floor plan or a sketch of the uh, applicate the, the one bedroom dwelling that's uh, being requested? Do we have that? Because I don't see it in my package. For you, Madam Chair, um, we have not received or we had not received a site plan prior to this meeting. Um, however, the applicant has indicated that he has is ready to present it tonight during his presentation. Sure. Um, so like it is in my email inbox at the moment. If he speaks to it, I can bring it on screen. Oh, super. Thanks, Ed. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions of staff before we bring the delegate? No, thanks very much. All right, so we have Mr. M. Arshad Siddiqui speaking to the application. Please be patient while our host invites the application into the meeting. This may take. Is ready to present it tonight during the presentation. Um, so like it is in my email inbox at the moment. If he speaks to it, I can bring it on screen. Oh, super, thanks. Yeah. Any other questions of staff before we bring? Do we have Arshad online? Uh, yes, we do. Wonderful. Can you make sure you mute your YouTube, please, Mr. Siddiqui? I did. I did Wonderful. That. Thank you very much. Thanks for joining us this evening. And you've got five minutes to talk about your application. Thank you. Good evening, Chair and Committee members. Uh, my name is Arshad, uh, architect and agent on behalf of the owner at 90, 91 Jade Avenue, Cambridge. Uh, the basement is semi-finished, uh, or I should say 80% finished, and the total area of basement is around 686 square feet. Uh, the second unit area will be 520 square feet with one bedroom, a living dining, and a small kitchen. Uh, we are not able to meet the uh, two of uh, uh, 10 uh, zoning bylaw requirements, which are lot area and lot frontage. And there's pretty much uh, nothing we can do about that at this stage. So uh, owner would like to request uh, relief in the lot frontage and the lot area requirement. So he can create a second unit in the basement with access from the rear yard with walkout basement, no exterior uh, modification is proposed. Uh, Edmund, would you be able to show the floor plan to the committee? Hello? Yeah, it'll just Madam, be a moment. Madam Chair, I will bring that up momentarily. I just Can you blow that one up for us? Wonderful. Magical. Thank you, Edmund. We have it now up. We can now see it, Arshad? Mm -hmm. um, not yet, actually. Mm -hmm. Well, there is a slight delay on YouTube. You'll see it in a moment. You see it yet, Arshad? Yeah, thank you very much, Edmund. Uh, yes, committee uh, members, this is the floor plan of the proposed second unit. Entrance from the rear yard, patio door, living dining, a bedroom, a kitchen at the back of stairs, a washroom, and remaining area would be for uh, owner's use. Thank you. Uh, through the chair, I have a question for uh, the architect. Um, it, 
am, am I seeing this correctly that the entrance through the rear is going to be by way of a patio door? Uh, that is correct. It's an existing patio door. Okay. And, so, yeah. Uh, that seems a little unusual from a security point of view, but uh, okay. Okay. Through the chair, um, a quick question for the architect. Is that is this a walkout lot? Like a it walkout? is a walkout. Yeah, it walk is a walkout. Okay. Thanks. When you walk out of the basement, you are at the grade level. On the okay. left, you see, is the underside of deck, which is on the main floor. Okay. okay. Gotcha. Quick question, because it's a bit small. Your master bedroom is seven feet wide? <laughs> it's, a, it's a tight basement. Uh, we are limited with the square footage requirement. Living dining needs at least 180, and uh, a master bedroom would need at least 95 with a closet. So okay. uh, it's nearly eight feet, seven feet, nine inches. Okay. Uh, but it's longer, 14 feet, seven inches. So it should be okay for a Okay. Thank you. Is there anything else you wish to share? Uh, no, I think I'm good. I'm available to answer any other question. Any other questions of the committee for the delegate? Nope, doesn't look like we do. Thanks very much for joining us this evening, Arshad. Appreciate your time. Thank you. All right. Are there any questions of staff before we ask for a motion? We seem. Hang on, so Lisa's got to get it back up again because Ed was sharing his screen. Can you, through the chair, sorry, can you see it? Yes, I can now. Yes, okay. Thank you. Uh, so, were there any questions of staff before we ask for a motion? No? Seeing none? Okay. All right. If we could have a motion, please. Madam Chair, I move that this application be refused. I, through the chair, I'll second that motion. Okay. So we have it on the floor. We're going to need to understand the refusal. Madam Chair, it's the continuing R6 problem of a seriously deficient lot size. No matter what the bylaw says, it, it isn't even close to the current bylaw requirement. And we know from experience the problems that this creates when the the density and intensification of an R6 neighborhood starts to take over um, and create the problems that it does. And we're simply trying to be consistent about avoiding those problems. Yep. And through the chair, if I may add, uh, uh, I do not believe that it meets three of the four tests. Okay, that's, that's an important point too there. All right, so if we can vote for a refusal of this application, as noted by Dawn. Ed, are you okay with the uh, notes at your end? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, this, it is the opinion of the committee that uh, it uh, the application fails to meet three of, three of the four tests, and that this represents a continuing attempt to avoid issues of over-intensification in the R6 zone. Okay, thank you. All right, if we could have a vote, all in favor of refusal of the application. Gerald? Uh, through the chair, I'm in favor of the refusal. Thank you, Francis. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the refusal. Thank you, and Dawn. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the refusal. Thanks very much, application denied.
Now we're moving on to, as I can scroll, A8721, which is 165 Greenbrier Road. Thank you. So the applicant is, is requesting two minor variances. Uh, the variances will facilitate the construction of two eight-story residential apartment buildings. So one of the variances is um, a variance on density. So the request is 183 units per hectare when the requirement is 75 and a rear yard setback of 5.02 meters when the requirement is 12 meters. So the subject lands are located at the corner of Green, Greenbrier Road and Myers Road on an irregular shaped lot and have an approximate area of 1.92 hectares. The subject lands are designated high density residential in the city's official plan and are zoned RM3 under zoning bylaw. The subject property has an active site plan application under file under SP 2819 and is currently undeveloped. The proposal is to develop the lands with two eight-story residential apartments, landscaped open space, and indoor and outdoor amenity areas. The proposed variance is to provide for future intensification flexibility on the lands. So as I mentioned, the property is designated high density residential in the city's official plan. The high density residential designation permits residential development, such as apartment buildings with densities between 0 0.5 and 2.0 um, FSI, which is the floor space index. So the proposed development of two eight-story residential apartment buildings is permitted by the official plan. Um, under the RM3, under RM3 zoning, um, two-story residential apartment building is permitted. Um, the, it's important to note here that the official plan was approved after the city's zoning bylaw. So although not approved yet, it is worth noting that the city's draft new zoning bylaw uh, does implement the FSI approach consistent with the official plan and allows for a maximum of 2.0 uh, on these lands as well. The first building on the phase development is currently under site plan review and meets all zoning requirements. It's the second building um, that triggers the variance to request for additional density. So this is the RM3 zone up here in an aerial. It is uh, vacant undeveloped right now. This building is in site plan. Um, it's approved and it meets, like I mentioned, meets all all the zoning, the addition of building B is what triggers additional density. And again, they are asking for um, a smaller yard setback there. Beside the lands is, a, is an open space parcel there. So staff um, are of the opinion that the, the reduction in the side yard or uh, in the rear yard setback is appropriate given uh, the lands that are beside it. This is a site visit photo. It's just uh, a vacant parcel right now. So City of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval of the minor variance application subject to the two conditions. Lisa, a quick question. The uh -huh. open lands that are beside it, what are those open lands zoned? They're just, they're already zoned as open land with no through the chair, yeah, it's uh, it's open oh, space. I believe it's a storm, something for storm water. Okay, that's I, I just didn't get out to this one, so that's why I wanted just to clarify. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah, Madam Chair, I have a, a question. First of all, I'd like to state that I think this is an appropriate development for this this property in this location along Myers Road between um, between um, Greenbrier and Cheese Factory. I mean, it's becoming quite a, a density node there, and I, I think it's working well. But I do have a question about a statement in the staff report that I think it's at the very first paragraph on page two. Mm -hmm. The last sentence, it says, the proposed variance is to provide for future intensification flexibility on the lands. And I'd like to know from Lisa what that's intended to mean. Through the chair, the intention of that, um, my interpretation from the application is that uh, Future intensification flexibility on the lands is that second building. So they're they're allowed to have two buildings um, in the zoning. They can have the two eight story. It's the density of the second building that the variance is for. So that's where that flexibility for the future intensification, because that second building isn't in the site plan yet. 
Okay, so it's adding that second building, which is the future intensification. That's correct. That's a great question, Don. Yeah, that's how to be the chair. That's how I interpret the application. But the um, the applicant, I believe, is here this evening. So um, hopefully, they can clarify that if I've if I misspoke in any way. Okay, wonderful. Any other questions of staff before we invite Melissa? Seeing none. Great. Looks like we have Melissa Visser joining us. <clears throat> Please be patient while we have Edmund invite her in. For you, Madam Chair, my understanding is that uh, Dave Aston will be stepping in for Melissa. Okay. However, we are having issues contacting either right now. So if um, your indulgence, if we can have a moment. While we're waiting, I just, Madam Chair, if I could just make a comment about this plan we're looking at. Um, I, I, I like the way they've laid it out. I don't know if you know this or not, but as of about 20 years ago or so, when you had a project like this, they put the parking right up front, right against the road to make it nice and obvious. <laughs> there was all this parking and the building was at the back. And now what they're doing is they're putting these buildings, which are actually quite attractive, they're putting them right up front. They're highly visible. It's good for the residents who live there. I think there must be some security advantages to being so close to the to the street. So um, this is a this is a, a nice example of this new trend in higher density urban design. Yeah, yeah, I, we are I, seeing I, it a lot more. Yeah. Has the delegation timer gone on or is it automatic? No, it's not gone on yet. Oh, okay. It'll go on once she's invited in or Dave is. Lisa, while we're still waiting, do we want to maybe do a bio break now? Yeah. Let's do that. And then that'll give Ed a little more time to heard behind the scenes. Sound good? Are you, Madam Chair? I believe we have him now. Oh, wonderful. Okay. Um, but we lost your. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. Oh, you're back. Okay, super. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you were quick. <laughs> That cup of tea is waiting for you. All righty. Good evening, Dave. Are you with us? Yes, I am. Welcome. Thanks for joining us. Oh, sorry Before about the delay. Hey, it happens. All right. You've got the floor. Five minutes as Great. usual. Thanks for the opportunity this evening. And I, I was listening to the discussion in advance and appreciate the summary and report uh, by city staff. Uh, and to um, the questions of committee, I'll just hit those right head on. Uh, the intent of the variance is to provide for uh, the second building on the property. Uh, just by way of background, uh, our, our client uh, on this property uh, has been working to the east of the lands and worked through the first two uh, buildings. So 
we've always designed and planned this intersection as as a as a node. Um, the planning for the area always looked at uh, this area, this corridor, as uh, Mr. Drackley identified as a, as a high density corridor, and we're now seeing uh, that realized over the last five to eight years with different types of development providing different housing options along the corridor. Uh, so these two buildings, uh, again, provide additional uh, rental housing opportunity. Uh, we have been in discussions with staff on the master plan. So when we submitted the phase one site plan, we submitted the plan on the screen as a, as a master plan. And so we're looking uh, for this evening to, uh, I would say, fast track uh, on the permissions for the density as there's a lot of interest and demand for the rental housing um, that's being proposed. And uh, we've been working with our client and waiting quite patiently over the last couple of years, uh, looking for the new new bylaw to come forward. But uh, we we just are finding now that there's enough interest and demand in, in rental housing and to uh, provide units to the market uh, to move forward. So in discussion with staff, uh, uh, we we proceeded with this variance this evening. So just. Uh, my presentation, if you could hit the next slide, I don't really have all that much. Uh, staff covered the official plan, uh, permissions, and the intent of the bylaw as it relates to uh, the high density development. The setback reduction, uh, I'll call it to the rear of the apartment that's in north south, uh, that is to a stormwater management pond. Uh, the setback for the building along Myers Road is pulled back a bit from the street because of uh, easement um, over the frontage uh, overland flow that gets water to that storm pond. So that storm pond is serving the broader subdivision. So it's an open space zone that we'll be staying. Um, this slide just talks about uh, the different types of uses. Uh, really that corridor uh, consideration, uh, high density is is planned and actually close to probably being built out across uh, the area along Myers Road. Uh, next slide. Mm -hmm. I think we're, is just coming up to the uh, the concept plan. And just being mindful of the five minutes, I, will, I want to just say that we support the staff recommendations. Uh, it's our opinion the variance uh, maintains the intent of the official plan, really implementing the official plan on the site. Uh, the bylaw approach to high density residential is being maintained. Uh, the official plan permits the height uh, that's proposed and uh, measures density on a floor space ratio. So what's being proposed on the plan uh, meets uh, the floor space ratio requirement and uh, the bylaw measures density by unit. So that's why it looks like perhaps a large request um, because of how the bylaw measures density uh, now versus how the official plan measures density. Uh, and so we also believe that the proposed use for the apartment buildings uh, is the appropriate use of the land. It's been planned for for many years as apartment blocks uh, since the time of the original plan, a subdivision, these were identified. And uh, that given those considerations, the request is, is minor in nature. So. With that, uh, that's our conclusion and happy to answer any questions. Thanks very much. Are there any questions of Mr. Austin from committee? No. Looks like I don't see any. Gerald, you're still there, right? Yeah, I'm still okay, here. Okay, yeah. okay. Right, just making sure you're black. <laughs> you're all on your whole screen. All right, super. Dave, thanks very much for your time this evening. We do appreciate it. Thank you. And I guess we can bring a motion then if there's no further questions. Um, through the chair, I move that we approve this application with the two conditions outlined in the staff recommendation report. Thanks, Gerald. And if I could have a seconder. 
Madam Chair, just on a point of order, I presume there weren't any delegations on this, right? I'm so sorry. It's twice I've done that tonight. Are there any, Edmund? I don't think there are, but. So Madam Chair, I have nothing scheduled. Thank you. Thanks, Dawn, appreciate that. All right, so we have a motion of a, to accept, approve, and we need a seconder, please. Madam Chair, I'll, ex I'll, I'll second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion from the committee? No, we'll bring it to a vote then. All in favor as presented with the two conditions. Gerald? Uh, through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, Francis. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, and Dawn. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, carried unanimously. And now, do we want that bio break, guys, before we get into the tannery? Sure. I think we should. Let's call, can we do five minutes? Lisa, are we okay with that? Through the chair. <laughs> yep, yep, it's okay. up to the chair to. All right, so we'll see. So it is now, we'll come back at 7.43. All right. Thank you. Thank you.
Okay. Now, did, did we get some late information on tannery? I, I think we got some leathers or leather. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I, I, I didn't get around to opening that. We definitely we had we had one letter from a uh, a neighbor. Yeah. Oh, okay. Was there more than one? Oh, yes, letter? yes. Okay. There was one from a Dave. Yeah. Yeah. All right. We all back? Yes. Okay. Wonderful. So we're starting off with the bang at 888 slash 21, 12 Tannery Street East. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, so the applicant is requesting relief from the zoning bylaw um, for a number of variances. Uh, the first one is density of 198 units, whereas 150 units uh, is required. A front yard setback of 1.5 meters, whereas 4.5 meters is required. A left interior side yard setback of 1.5 meters, where 7.5 meters is required. A right interior side yard setback of 3.35 meters, where again, 7.5 meters is required. Landscaped open space, uh, a request of 20%, uh, whereas 30% is required, and lot frontage of 26.31 meters, whereas 30 meters is required. So the subject lands are, are located in the community core area of Hessler Village and are zoned C1RM2. The proposal is to redevelop the lands with a five-story mixed-use building containing commercial and residential uses, including a first floor commercial space and lobby, 40 resi residential units on floors two to five, ground floor and outdoor parking, and indoor and outdoor common amenity areas. The application relates to a proposed development that was reviewed by city staff at uh, pre-consultation meeting, uh, file D2621. This is the zoning uh, to the left here and an aerial. Um, you could see it backs onto uh, park area. And then the uh, variances are just shown here. Um, again, the density, it's just not shown on the site plan, but there's a density uh, variance that they're asking for. So 3.5 meter side yard setback on this portion here, uh, it does abut, um, I believe this is a church. 1.5 meter side yard setback here. Uh, 1.5 meter side yard setback in the front. The frontage is uh, 26 um, meters. What they're sorry, 26.31 meters frontage is what they are requiring as well. Um, this is just a site uh, visit photo. So again, uh, if you could see this corner piece here, this would be um, that church property same uh, shown down here. It would be where this, this home currently is. It'd be this property that's being developed. Whoops. Ah, sorry. <laughs> this, this property that's being developed. And then the, so the church is 3.5 meters setback. Um, and this property here is 1.5 meters setback. So City of Cambridge planning staff recommends deferral of this minor variance application to allow for additional review by planning staff. Um, this is simply uh, just for more staff, for staff to take some more time to review this application. In particular, just the two um, we'd want some more time to review is the interior side yard setbacks. So the 1.5 meters and 3.35 meters. We did hear from a neighbor. Uh, we do wanna make sure that we are considering uh, the public's opinion on this as well. So we just want to request 
deferral just to the next committee meeting, um, just to allow some more time for a more thorough review on this application. I believe we have the applicant here um, tonight as well to present. Yes, I'm not sure if it's going to be Dave or if Melissa is going to do this one. Do we know, Ed? This is going to Good be evening. Dave. Yeah. Hello, Dave. Welcome back. Hi, everyone. Thank you. <laughs> Your clock st starts whenever you'd okay. like. Uh, thanks again for the opportunity. We, uh, we have had a chance to talk to staff about the deferral. Wanted to just work through our presentation. Um, as it relates to the request this evening, and uh, and you know the committee will ultimately decide. Uh, but we've put a lot of time and effort into getting here this evening, and uh, think that this is a great proposal. And understand that there are some additional letters in in support of the proposal, including um, the adjacent property owner, uh, the Salvation Army property, which was referenced as the church property. Uh, so next slide, please. Uh, the proposed uh, variances, again, uh, some of them simply reflect the existing condition. Uh, uh, the frontage is the existing condition. Uh, and then uh, the requests associated with the density, again, relate to uh, the difference in how the official plan and the zoning bylaw interact with each other. And the form of the development, uh, if uh, the committee will recall, there's been variances considered on this before where I'll call the bylaw itself creates a setback scenario uh, with multiple step backs to a, a wedding cake design. And so what's being proposed here is step backs for the front and the rear of the building uh, and not the, the setbacks for the top portions of the building. So when the variance is requesting a reduction from, you know, for example, 1.5 from 7.5, the 7.5 setback would be the top setback uh, at the fifth story. Uh, the ground floor setback in this, this scenario, uh, because the city in their core areas look at uh, zoning in a compound way. So it's a combination of a commercial and a residential zone. Uh, the commercial uh, zone has a different setback requirement than the residential zone. And so the commercial zone, for example, on uh, the commercial uses has a zero uh, front yard setback for the ground floor commercial. So the setback relates to the step backs associated with the residential. Similarly, the bylaw talks about uh, garages and parking areas, and those also in commercial zones have a zero setback. So what's being proposed as a reduction relates to the residential uh, building, the residential uh, stories as the, as the building gets higher. So that just wanted to provide a, a bit of an overview of uh, how the requests for the variances are working. And if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, the building has been designed to have the ground floor commercial facing uh, Tannery Street and then goes up uh, uh, levels similar to the idea of the uh, Queen Street uh, uh, guidelines, urban design guidelines to provide that uh, facade similar to Queen Street as far as the storefront and then the residential steps back and at the rear of the site the uh, building steps back uh, and sorry the next slide so that's the front uh, slide there at the rear of the building the building is stepping back recognizing um, you know the, the proximity to existing residential and also to create some views and terracing and amenity area for the building uh, that would uh, look over Forbes Park, which, as you know, is a, a large park in the area. So the rest of the slides just provide a general concept of the building uh, on the site and views from the different elevations. So we're, again, uh, proposing tonight the variances. Uh, the 
proposal meets the intent of the official plan uh, for core areas. We believe this continues to build on housing choice and opportunity in the core and support the local businesses. Uh, the bylaw itself uh, speaks to this type of use. Uh, the height is permitted. Uh, there's no request in increasing height in this location. And uh, we believe that the intended use of lands in the core area is to intensify and is to support intensification and uh, businesses in the core area. We believe that what is being proposed is minor in nature and context of uh, the planning framework direction and the official plan and zoning bylaw direction to implement the overall policy objectives of not just the city, but the region and provincial policy as it relates to development in core areas and built up areas. Okay, I gotta again, stop you we, there, we, Dave. I gotta yep, stop you there. That's all we I, I yeah. just want to suggest we have had discussions with staff. Mm -hmm. uh, we're happy to answer any question, questions this evening and uh, just look forward to the opportunity to uh, to move forward where possible and have details associated with design addressed at site plan approval. So thank you. Thanks. Any questions for Dave from our committee? Nope, Gerald, you're muted just so you know. Yeah, no, 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 no <laughs> questions. I, I, I think, uh, um, you know, we clearly the, the area needs further development. Uh, I think the committee would welcome uh, development, but uh, stuff uh, requires more time to look at all of the issues very carefully. So, all right. So, it's been a while since I've done a deferral. Are we going to see if anyone else wants to speak to this, or do we move to the deferral? What's the Are actual? You, Madam Chair, Thank we have you. another delegate waiting. We have another delegate. Thanks so much. I'll let you introduce them, Edmund. I have a David Braddocka. Yeah. Hello, David. Thank you for joining us this evening. Can I get you to turn off your YouTube, please, or mute it? Wonderful. Uh, yeah. Okay, it's been muted. All right. You've got five minutes to chat with us. <clears throat> and the floor is into the meeting. You into are. Right now, you or? are. Yep, <clears throat> you absolutely are. Is it my turn to talk or am it I going to be? It is. No, nope, oh, your turn. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, guys. Just turn That's off okay. YouTube and come into here. Um, so I've, I've submitted a letter. I'm, I'm hoping that everyone's uh, received that in, on the committee. Um, so I guess uh, I, I represent the residential housing that's right next door to the property. Mm -hmm. And um, we are, I am two houses over. Um, but uh, directly beside the property, facing the property to the right, uh, were two semi-detached homes, and I know the obviously the owner that's attached to me. And um, we're we're pretty, uh, I mean, concerned about something this large going so close uh, to our property line. Um, you know, two of the things that we're, we're most concerned about are setbacks and drainage. There, there's a natural slope that comes kind of uh, from our property down towards 12. Uh, so we do have concerns about how drainage will um, come through uh, or how that will be uh, uh, dealt with. Uh, but also there is, um, you know, how far close, how, how far forward they would like to build the building and, and how close they're putting it to our properties. I mean, 1.5 meters, you know, that's, that's four feet away, five stories high. Um, that becomes a pretty uh, uh, ominous building. So close to our properties, uh, obviously remove. There's a lot of shadowing associated with that. Um, there is uh, loss of privacy in our properties, and um, uh, and you know when it's so close to the the roadway, we're concerned about you know kind of trying to pull out onto the street, uh, losing our sight lines. Um, you know, just kind of concerned for children if they're playing out in the driveway or or, or by our, our on the sidewalk there. Or, you know, kind of how that would um, impact our properties. Like, I, I tried to cover it in the letter. Um, I'm not against them doing something with the with the property. I mean, obviously, we need development, but I, I definitely think it needs to fit for the new owners and the current owners that are there. 
because, you know, we're obviously not commercial zoning, we're residential zoning. And, uh, you know, we're right on the edge of where the two meet. So uh, we definitely don't want this to have an overly negative impact on, you know, living in our properties. All right. Thank you. I, I think that's important that you've shared your thoughts with us. Mm-hmm. That's what this is all about. Are there any questions for David from committee? Uh, Madam Chair, just a quick question of, of the delegate. Sir, do you and your neighbors, you do realize that you're living in an area that's designated as a community core area for intensification? Uh, well, that's I, what the, I realize that's what that, that the official plan says. Okay. I'm sorry, is... Like, I understand that there's, you know, a, a higher density of zoning beside me. Um, so I, I'm not here saying don't develop at all. I'm just, you know, if you had a five-story building one point, you know, four feet away from your lot line, that's that's very different than uh, other options that could be there, right? It's, it's a, that's a pretty intense building directly beside a one-story building. And that's what I think the, the staff's recommendation to defer this for further study is all about, is to make sure that they understand the impacts of this and how they can be avoided or mitigated while at the same time recognize, recognizing that this piece of property is a very valuable piece of property in the Hesper core and it is an intensification area. The question is how intense? I, I think that's that is the question that needs to be kind of figured out um, because obviously that's, that's a large property, but I don't think we need to uh, concrete or asphalt 99.9% of the property. I know I'm I'm you know throwing a big tumper out there, but uh, they are going kind of edge to edge to edge to edge with the development, and they can have a very proper profitable development for themselves that will you know increase density and, and meet the city's needs uh, at the same time, you know, being respectful of um, individuals that live there and that are going to live there. Right. I mean, there, there is, they are right on the edge of some residential housing. So there there's, there's a reality to that. Yeah. Good point, sir. Mm-hmm. Thanks, David. Any other questions of David? No. Seeing none. Super. David, thanks very much for joining us this evening. We appreciate your time. Thank you. Okay, I'll mute out and turn the volume back on YouTube. (laughs) Thank you. Thanks. Bye. Edmund, do we have anyone else wishing to speak to this? Three, Madam Chair, we have no one else scheduled. No one else. Okay, thank you. So I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, we need a motion of deferral. Madam Chair, Chair, we we did uh, today receive three um, letters from... Uh, downtown Hespler businesses in support of this, uh, not surprising in support because of um, more more people, more business, more economic vitality. And um, it's, it's only three, but it's always a, an indicator of what you would expect a business improvement area to say about a project like this. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. All right, if I could have a motion for deferral. Uh, through the chair, I'll make a motion that we uh, accept the deferral as outlined in the staff recommendation report. And I believe we need to put a time on it, do we not? Uh, you, Madam Chair, it is preferred to have a specific time, um, yeah. but it, it's the committee's choice, the nature of the deferral. Up to you, team. Do you want a deferral of up to six well, months? Ma- 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 Madam Not- Chair, Madam Chair, this doesn't necessarily have to take a lot of time. The, yeah. The, 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 oh, okay. That's what I'm. Staff, that's why I'm asking. Staff have, yep. The staff have had this in front of them for a while. Uh, the, the the applicant has developed the plans. Um, there are some obvious questions which I think um, were, were noted by staff at the beginning of this presentation that have to be uh, looked into a little more carefully. So I. I would su- suggest if you could put a maximum of, you know, six 
I shouldn't say, uh, like two months. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm just thinking of workflow with what they got on their docket already, though, because we're backed up. So that was why I had said six if we couldn't get it. But I think probably three is reasonable. Like, I, I wouldn't want to do anything that would unfairly um, delay the applicant if, in fact, the applicant and the city can come up with a plan that is generally acceptable to the neighborhood. Okay. And I question well, whether that would take six months. Well, why don't we say maximum 90 days? How okay, that? that's fine with me, Madam Chair. Let me just... How many meetings is that? Hang on. Okay, it's 12 weeks, right? All right, so we have a motion for deferral. If we could have a formal motion, please. Okay, through the chair, I move that we uh, defer this application for 90 days to in order to give staff the required time that they're requesting. Up to 90 days, Up right. 90. right, perfect, okay. And do I have a seconder? Madam Chair, I second that motion. Thank you. Any further discussion? I don't know how to close my chat. All right. We could have a vote then. All in favor? No, I'm just trying to click. I opened up a screen of chat and I couldn't get rid of it. Um, all in favor, if we could vote, starting with Francis. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion of the borough. Thank you. And Gerald? Uh, through the chair, I'm in favor of the deferral motion. Thank you, Dawn. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the deferral motion. Okay, wonderful. Deferred for 90 days. Thank you. Up to 90 days. Sorry, it's quiet. And I guess we're now moving on to A92 slash 21, which is 311 Dundas Street South. Thank you. So 3, 311 Dundas Street South, the applicant is requesting a minor variance to facilitate, facilitate the construction of a six-story mixed-use building with residential above commercial. So what they are requesting is a residential floor area um, that is 80% of the total building, whereas our bylaw um, re requires a maximum of only two-thirds of the total building to be residential. So the subject property comprises a total of 2.56 hectares and is located at the intersection of Franklin Boulevard and Dundas Street South. The lands also have a frontage on Maple Bush, um, Franklin Boulevard and Dundas Street South. The site is developed with four commercial buildings, a bank and three restaurants. Two of the restaurants and the bank contain drive-through operations. Access to the site is provided from three, from three existing driveways, two from Franklin Boulevard and one from Maple Bush Drive. The rear portion of the site adjacent to Chester Drive is currently vacant. Parking for the existing commercial building is provided in a shared service parking lot. There are no changes being proposed to the existing commercial uses or buildings. So this is the zoning here. You could see it has the three frontages on the streets and just an aerial there. Uh, the subject property is here. So this is the existing commercial. So the applicant has indicated that um, the existing commercial is all to remain. There are no changes being proposed. What is being looked at here is a commercial property on the first floor with residential units above it. So it's a new six story mixed use building on the site. So uh, the subject lands are designated low medium density residential in the city's official plan, which permits residential, residential uses with a density limit of 40 units per hectare, which is approximately 102 units on the subject lands. The proposed mixed use building is permitted in the official plan and the density is permitted as well. The CS5 C5 zone permits a mixed use building on the subject lands. However, like I mentioned before, uh, it limits the residential gross floor area to two thirds um, of the total. So in this case, what they're, what they're proposing is 80% residential, uh, whereas the bylaw would only allow for 67% residential and the rest would, be, uh, would need to be commercial. 
So the intent of the two thirds provision is to encourage mixed use buildings. The buildings would contain one floor commercial uses and five residential floors above. Given the location of the building and the existing commercial uh, uses all around it um, that already exist on the site, um, staff are of the opinion that um, one floor of commercial and uh, with 80% residential is appropriate um, and staff's uh, satisfied that the intent of, of the zoning provision is maintained. The introduction um, of residential uses on the site is consistent with the planned intent for the lands being a community node and allows for future residents to access commercial businesses on a site without being dependent on a vehicle. The location of the residential building on the eastern portion here um, of the site, it also allows, sorry, it allows for a transition in land use from commercial to residential, which is consistent. So you can't really see it too much here, but there's an entire subdivision of rent residential uses. Right. So with the commercial here, um, it would it would allow uh, for a nice transitional area that kind of backs onto residential there. This is a site visit of uh, the vacant portion that they would be looking to develop. So City of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval of the minor variance application subject to the one condition. And that's it for my presentation. Thanks, Lisa. Questions from the team? Uh, to the chair, I have two questions for staff. Uh, one is the zoning right now is CS5, C5, which would suggest a shopping center and the C5 is automotive related, either garage or gas bar. Um, do, you have, do we have any idea what the nature of the commercial on the main flow uh, is, is being proposed? Through the chair, I'm not entirely sure what, what the commercial use would be on the first floor. Um, okay. I believe the applicant might be here tonight. We could maybe get that clarification from them. Okay, and, and my second question is, you know, we, we see a site plan. Is there any kind of uh, um, rendering of what's being, what they're asking for? Is that something we're going to hear from Trevor Hawkins? Through you don't have any. Yeah, through the chair, I don't have um, any renderings submitted okay. with the application. All right, thank you. Any other questions? So, nope, doesn't, not seeing any, thank you. Looks like we have Trevor Hawkins that's going to join us this evening. And Edmund will let us know when he's available. Hello, Trevor. Hi. Hello, Trevor. Welcome. Thanks for joining us this evening. And we're waiting to hear what you And you've got five minutes. Great. I just on a bit of a delay, but I think there were some questions there from the committee that I hope I, I can answer. And one of the questions I heard was what were the uses um, planned for the for the main Correct. floor of the building? Uh, <clears throat> so you, you'll note that there are three restaurants and a bank uh, on the site today. And one of the possibilities that the, is that the bank may move to the new building. So we've accommodated sufficient space in the new building to uh, to allow the RBC to relocate to that location. Um, and then other uses would be um, community oriented uses. So there may be some, um, you know, dentist office, personal service uses, uses that would support uh, the residential community in the area. So we wouldn't be looking to duplicate um, the uses that are already uh, on the site, so in terms of the restaurants that are there, um, and we also wouldn't be looking to introduce automotive-oriented uh, uses that are, um, you know, in the C5 zone type uses. So that was that's not the intent. The intent is really to make use, make better use of a vacant portion of the site to introduce some residential uses onto the to onto a property that uh, is planned in the official plan for a mix of uses, but currently really only has commercial uses. So we see as an opportunity to uh, introduce residential into an area that uh, that doesn't have any on the site. Um, as, as 
staff noted, it's an excellent way to transition from the commercial focus on other parts of the node to the community further to the east. And really the, the variance itself is, uh, is just looking to have one floor of commercial and five floors of residential instead of two floors of commercial and four floors of residential. And we see it as a, a, a one floor of commercial in, in that location, sort of at the rear portion of the site is a better fit than, than, uh, than two floors of, of commercial. So <clears throat> we, we feel that the, the variance meets uh, the official plan, certainly it meets the intent of the zoning bylaw. It's a, it's a mixed use building, which is what's planned for the site. Uh, it's a very minor increase in, in floor area for residential uses. The building is situated in an area where it's uh, got sufficient separation from the residential uses to the east, uh, as well as the other commercial uses on the property, so it can fit into an area that's underutilized, and it can make use of uh, accesses that are already uh, on the property. So it can use Maple Bush to to get out to Dundas and use the roundabout uh, at Franklin. There's lots of ways to get in and out of this property without any penetration into the neighborhood to the east. Thank you. Thanks very much, Trevor. We appreciate your time. Are there some questions for Trevor from the committee? Have we lost Gerald? Looks like we have. Give him a few minutes to see. Trevor, quick question from me. Were there any sure. renderings of this of this particular design yet? We uh, we are uh, going to embark into the site plan process in okay. the new year. So we had the floor plans and the site plan, but no uh, no detailed elevations yet. No. Okay, thank you, Gerald. Did you have any questions for Trevor? Uh, no, that's uh, my, my questions have been answered. Thank you. Oh, you're very welcome. Thank you. So super, Trevor, thanks for joining us. We'll keep moving on then. Thanks, everyone. Have a good yep. night. You as well. Bye for now. Do we have any other delegates on this one? Are you, Madam Chair, none are registered. Thank you very much. Any further questions of staff before we ask for bring a motion to the floor? Seeing none, if we could have a motion, please. Madam Chair, I move that this application be approved with the one staff condition. Thank you, seconder. And Through the chair. Second that motion. Second that motion. <laughs> Thank you, Francis. Francis seconds. All right, if we could have a vote. All in favor of A92 <laughs> slash 21 with the one condition as presented. Don. Uh, Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, Francis. Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion. And Gerald. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Super. Carried unanimously. Thanks, folks. And now we're moving on to A95 slash 21 and A96 slash 21. When it comes down to it, we will have two separate um, motions on this one, but we'll start. Through the chair, thank you. Um, so we're looking at nine ver place here. So the applicant, um, uh, sorry, as the chair mentioned that um, there is two files here, but they are um, somewhat part of the same property. So um, we, we will look at them together, but then vote on them separately. So they're looking for uh, both of the same minor variances. So they're looking for a frontage. So an interpretation of their place as frontage, um, whereas the zoning bylaw requires that um, frontage must be on an open street um, in order basically to build a home, to put a home on a lot, there must be a frontage. Um, and for parking locations. So they're looking for two spaces that will be in front of the regulatory building line, whereas parking must be located behind the regulatory building line. So the variances will facilitate the construction of one new single detached dwelling um, and an associated shared access driveway. So the property here, um, let me see here. The properties are located south of Blenheim Road between Aberdeen Road North and Victoria Park. Both properties are zoned R4 residential in the zoning bylaw and low medium density residential in the official plan. 
The properties are bounded by laneway in the rear, fair place in the front, and open space zone um, just, uh, just west of fair place as Victoria Park. Um, so what this, what we're looking at here, so Ver Place, this is nine Ver, it's actually um, what we call a lot of records. So it's actually two developable lots. Um, it was, it would have been uh, some kind of historic lot of records. So it doesn't need to go through the severance process. So that's not what um, the committee is voting on. Um, this is this is a, a separate lot from this. Right now it operates as just one home on a large lot, but it is a separate lot. So the issue here is that uh, Vare Place, um, as you can see here off Blenheim Road, was only constructed to about here. Um, this image doesn't show it very well, but there's, there's a small parking area here for um, park access. And uh, the current, um, currently how this property would have accessed their home is through parking passes by the city. So they would have had some parking passes and then they could um, go in here. Now, the issue is that the bylaw requires um, for this home to be built, it requires to have frontage. Um, so that is what we are, what the applicant is requesting that their place, uh, the interpretation um, that this part of it still be considered frontage. Mm -hmm. So you can see here, uh, this is a site plan photo of what they've submitted. So again, this would be coming off their place. Um, this is the existing home. If this is the frontage, then the parking would be here. So again, the applicants don't have, or not the applicants, sorry, nine ver um, the existing home. They don't have any existing parking, uh, any formal existing parking right now because there is no road. So part of this application is proposing a um, access driveway um, that would be able, it would be shared access for both of these properties. So this is still city property, um, but they would require uh, some type of access easement um, to access and maintain and pay for, for this portion of, of their driveway. And if this is um, interpreted as the frontage, um, there's no variance required here, but the applicant did show that um, the existing property owner is interested in adding some parking spaces off the laneway here too. So this is a site visit. So um, currently it's a two-story home. This is again, nine bare place, the developed parcel. The undeveloped parcel just doesn't have an address yet. So we will just call it the undeveloped parcel. Um, there's nothing on it at the moment. Um, I did want to flag so that there has been um, quite a number of discussions um, between departments on this application um, that have occurred throughout the summer. Um, I think even before, actually before that. Um, so we have, one of the main issues was basically for access if there's no frontage, so fire um, and transportation. So we have um, had comments from fire um, and they are in the conditions. So staff is satisfied that with the proper conditions that all, all the um, concerns about access and fire could be addressed through there. Uh, mind you, they will still need for the undeveloped parcel, they will still need to meet all the requirements of the Ontario Building Code. Mm -hmm. Lisa, sorry to bother you. Can you go back one? I just want to ask a question while it's up. Whoops, wrong way. That's okay. This one. Yeah. So where you have, oh, go back to the photograph. Perfect. So the photograph on the right hand side where it shows the, the their basically their place ending, that's going to then have a gravel driveway further down that will become a private driveway for both properties. That's correct. It would have a driveway in here, but it would be in the conditions. It's to the satisfaction of the fire department. Um, they would need it to be a certain height and a certain width to withstand um, like any type of, yeah, their trucks, any type of firefighting operations. So there's specific radius. specs, yeah. yeah, specific specs that they would need. So that's why that condition is said just more so to the satisfaction of the fire department. So they are able to review it and, and give the okay if, if that's 
um, if it's designed accordingly. Because uh, what, what they've shown right now um, in their sketch, their, sure. the driveway is not wide enough. But again, this is just a, a quick sketch. Sure, sure. And that gravel driveway then becomes a privately maintained from the end of the, from the paving where the, where the gravel starts then becomes a private and they maintain that or is that city maintained? Through the chair, the city would not maintain it. So the city will maintain to the end of the pavement, correct? I believe the city still maintains this area. Okay. So they're still parking there, but um, the city would not maintain uh, the private parking areas. Gotcha. I just wanted to so, make sure so, I understood that. So Lisa, when, when this gravel driveway is extended beyond the asphalt we see here, it is providing access not only to the existing house that's off of um, off of there, but also to a empty lot, which would then have a new house on it. Is that right? Through the chair, that's correct. Okay. So if we go back, I don't know if I can go back in here. So yeah, it would roughly, from my understanding, go somewhere to about here. If you could see my mouse. Yep. Yep. So it would be this extension in here. Mm -hmm. Is that cool? Does that laneway that's behind it, I tried this today, but I, I, I didn't want to get stuck in the laneway. Can you go all the way, so the laneway that's not named, I don't think there's a name on that laneway. Does it go all the way through and catch up with laneway 142? Um, through the chair, not. Uh, it's not paved. So it's paved up to here, uh, okay. if you can see my mouse. Yep. Um, but the new lot does require servicing, and I believe servicing is... Um, coming, coming through, through the, the laneway. So it would, I believe um, a requirement would uh, potentially be that they would have to, it would have to be um, likely remediated and, and paved. Gotcha. Okay. And so also Lisa, lot 100 that we see on both of these pictures there, the air photos, there's a house on, on lot 100, right? That's correct. And it's, on, it's accessed off the cul-de-sac. I think they're accessed off, off laneway 142. It oh. looks like, like oh. the air photos oh, yeah, here. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. so they wouldn't be accessed off of this, this gravel driveway because it's not going down that far. Through the, yeah, that's correct. And I still think they can access it as well from the, from the turnaround, if I remember correctly. I've been there, I just can't remember. Okay, I'm good. Thank you. Sorry to interrupt yeah. there. I just yeah, wanted no to make problem. sure I, before I forgot it. Um, so staff do recommend approval. Um, the reason I wrote amended here is because I think I flipped um, in the recommendations and maybe I'll just have uh, someone else confirm. I think I flipped the names of the, the numbers of the application. So, um, so A96, oh, let's go ahead. Ed. Uh, through Madam Chair, uh, as I have it, A96, is for lot 14, which is the undeveloped portion. Undeveloped portion. Okay, so I did, so in the report- A95 is, yeah. Yeah, so in the report, I have them flipped. So that's on the screen here. So A96 on the screen here is correct. It should have the five conditions. Mm -hmm. um, and that is, I'll just read them. Uh, an access easement uh, be obtained. Uh, the new development be on lot 14 be fully sprinklered. Uh, access driveway no smaller than four meters of width, etc. Um, any new development be limited and an access permit through transportation. So that's for the undeveloped, um, as Ned confirmed, that's A9621, the five conditions. And then uh, A9521, as amended, I have here um, the three conditions. So that is a access easement as well, um, the sizing on the access driveway, and access permit through transportation engineering for the laneway. Perfect, thank you. So, so through the chair, just for clarification, A9521 has three conditions and A9621 has five. Correct. Right. Okay. Any other questions of staff before we invite Scott? Seeing none, we have Spot, Scott Patterson speaking for the application. Uh, please be patient while he comes on the line. Hello, Scott.
Scott, can you hear us? I can. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. You're on. Perfect. You're live. You've got five minutes on the clock, sir. Uh, good evening, uh, Chair and members of committee. Thank you for the opportunity to speak this evening. I'd like to thank Lisa for her presentation and her answers to the questions that uh, were posed. Uh, we're here naturally in full support of the variance and the recommendation of staff. My only comment or question was the, the conditions, which I, I think I saw Lisa addressed in the YouTube presentation, just that uh, A96 should be subject to the five conditions and A95 should be subject to three conditions. If that change can be made, then uh, we're satisfied and, and we're happy to, to proceed. Thank you. Any questions of Scott? No. All right. I believe we're good then, Scott. Thanks very much. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions of staff before we bring forward a motion? And we'll bring A95 first forward. Just Madam Chair, are yes. there any other delegations? Oh. Thank you. Are there any other delegations? Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, there are none scheduled. Thank you. All right. Mm -hmm. We can have a motion for A95, with, which is nine there with three conditions. Madam Chair, I move that uh, A95 be approved with the three staff conditions. Thank you. A seconder? Madam Chair, I'll second that motion. Just one sec, I'm just checking with a message here. Uh, A95 is an existing home. Yes. Okay, we're, we're cool. I just want to make sure I wasn't mucking it up. Okay, so I'm sorry, we have a, a mover and a seconder, correct? Yep. That's A95, correct. all right. Any further discussion? Seeing none, if we could have a vote on approving A95 with the three conditions, please. All in favor, I'll start with Francis. I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, Don. I'm Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thanks, and Gerald. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, A95 is carried with the three conditions as noted. Now we're taking a look at A96. Do we have any, do, are we okay with a motion for A96? Uh, Madam Chair, if I could just clarify one thing with staff. Sure. Is there any development application yet for, for, uh, for this vacant lot? Through the chair, I'm not aware of uh, any development that would have, they're only um, able to put a single family dwelling here. Exactly. I'm, not I'm not aware of anything that has gone through building permit. And I think that's one of the conditions, isn't it? Through the chair, the, um, the fire department did limit the height of the single family dwelling. That's interesting. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Any further questions of staff? Seeing none, if we could have a vote then on A96, which is the undeveloped parcel with the five conditions as noted. For you, Madam Chair, I do not have the seconder recorded. <gasps> Thank you. Could we have a seconder, please? Through the chair, I'll second the motion. Thank you, Gerald. Nice catch, Ed. All right. All in favor, A96, with five conditions. Wait. Francis first. Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you. Dawn? Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion. And Gerald? Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Super. Thanks very much. Carried unanimously. And I believe we're getting there. B3321 and B3421, which is 381 Middle Street. And again, same as last time, we will vote separately on these. Okay, thank you. Uh, this is 381 Middle Street. Uh, the applicant is seeking to sever two lots, both assigned to the municipal address of 381 Middle Street for construction of, uh, for a total construction of three new single detached homes. So the variance is, um, sorry, no variances. <laughs> what is uh, being conveyed and retained is pretty similar between the two lots. So um, 
the lot area uh, for lot 39, 736 square meters, frontage 18.22, and the retained property 486 square meters, 18.34. And then conveyed property on lot 40, um, similar uh, lot area 346, similar lot frontage 18.22, and the retained lands are 486 and 18.34. So the subject lands are located between Middle Street and Melrose Street, mid block between Lawrence Street and North Street, and are currently developed with a detached dwelling. The lands are designated low medium density residential in the city's official plan and zoned R5 residential. The proposed severances will result in, result in two new residential lots um, with three homes um, with dimensions described uh, previously in, in the previous slide. The existing single detached dwelling will be retained and up to three more constructed on the resulting parcels. While the parcel currently functions as a single parcel, planning and legal staff are satisfied that lots 39 and 40 currently represent two separately conveyable lots. So this is a similar uh, situation to the previous nine VAR where uh, 381 uh, Middle Street is actually two lots. So it's been operating as one. Um, so it's actually two. So the, the separation of these two lots is not in question on the severance. They are already legally two lots. So someone can come in and build a home right here. Um, what this application is looking at is now that these are two lots, they're looking to sever uh, the back end here. So kind of consistent with this line here. So then you'd have one lot here, one lot here, here, and then here. So it'd be a total of four lots altogether. So section 2.2 of the growth plan sets out, sets out that growth will be directed to settlement areas where municipal infrastructure is available and complete communities can be supported. The growth plan states that all municipalities will encourage intensification to achieve a desired urban structure. Chapter two of the official plan states that overall growth is to promote balance, uh, sorry, the overall goal is to promote balanced growth by directing a greater share of urban development towards the existing built up area and to ensure that 45% of new residential development in the region occurs within the built-up area as it has the greatest capacity to accommodate for growth and development um, pertaining to the availability of infrastructure, servicing, and transit options. So again, this is uh, just another um, site plan, if you may. So the one on the left here, this is the home, uh, this is the property um, in the corner where the home currently exists. This is the portion that will be retained. And then this is the portion that will be severed. And this is they, they would be proposing a home fronting on Melrose. And again, these are these are separate drawings. So then if we look at this one here, um, again, this right here is where the home currently exists. So then this is the portion that will be retained. Uh, another home will be built here. And this is the portion that we're looking at the severance. So what we're looking um, at, a, at um, approving today is the two the two green parcels the red um kind of exists already in its entirety there mm -hmm. right. this is just a site visit um, of the current home and then the the open open space the large property that it has so again this would be the conveyable lot and then the two homes um, from the severance um, from this application would be fronting melrose so staff are of the opinion that severing the lands is appropriate in the context of the area and for the use of land. The resulting lots will match uh, surrounding patterns of lots and development and the proposed use is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw official plan and surrounding land use. I did wanna note they're not seeking any minor variances because they can meet the lot area and frontage of that zone. So as such staff does not anticipate any negative impacts as a result of the, pro the, of the proposed severance. Um, so for B33, staff uh, recommends approval of the consent application with the 10 conditions and B34, uh, same thing, staff recommends approval with the 10 conditions. Thank you. Thanks, Lisa. Any questions from the committee for staff? Uh, to the chair, uh, when I read the staff recommendation report, uh, 
I, I'm seeing 12 conditions. Is that uh, oh. Lisa just mentioned 10 conditions? Through the chair, that's correct. I did, um, so I did update this report. Uh, there was a condition on there um, that shouldn't have been on there. And one, it was from the building department that I removed. I reviewed their comments. So it was a standard condition that we typically have for building for regarding servicing. Uh, but I went through their files and reviewed their comments and they have no concerns in terms of the servicing on the lots. So, w w so which one is that? What number? Um, is, is it number so six? It would have been the old one. Um, it would be, it's something that says with to the building division. To the satisfaction of the building condition, that's uh, yeah. uh, number six. So that one would have been removed. Okay. And, and there's another one that's also been removed. Yes, I believe that was the regional fee. Okay. Um, let me just, yes, because the region submitted their comments uh, to us uh, yesterday. Yesterday, uh -huh. yes. Um, and in their comments, they say that regional staff acknowledge that they've already reviewed the $350 fee per new lot. So I remove that as a condition because it's no longer necessary as they've received those funds. Okay. And I'm just trying to see which one, what number is that? That Oh, that's number 10. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks for catching that, Gerald. Okay. Any further questions? Before we invite Scott back. Seeing none. Edmund, you good to bring Scott back online? Hello, Scott. Hello. Hello, Scott. Thanks for coming back. You have the floor. Madam Chair. And yes. it's yours. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah. Thank you, Madam Chair. And again, uh, good evening to the committee members. Um, here in support of the consent applications and the staff recommendation for approval. I do have some comments about the conditions that are requested to be imposed. And I apologize for the lateness of this. Uh, but we didn't receive the staff report until this morning. I'd put forward a suggestion to staff that um, some of these conditions would be better suited to the time of actual development of the lots. Uh, the applicant is not a house builder. They're not the ones that will be building the houses on these properties. Uh, they just simply want to create the lots. So conditions four, uh, requiring a servicing plan. Condition five, requiring a grading plan. Uh, condition six uh, regarding the hydro servicing. Condition seven uh, regarding, uh, again, hydro servicing. And condition eight regarding an access permit, uh, in our opinion, may be premature at this point uh, because there is no house plans or anything known yet uh, that we could base a servicing plan off of or base a grading plan off of. Um, and we had suggested to staff that a development agreement could be registered on title that would obligate... Uh, the developer or their successors or assigns or the future owners of these lots uh, to do those particular items to make sure they're completed at an appropriate time when the actual house envelope is known, uh, where the garage location is known, um, so that we can pinpoint the actual driveway locations and other details. So that would be our request is if we could get conditions four, five, six, seven, and eight uh, reworded so that they were captured in a development agreement uh, registered on title, and uh, eventually they would be done, but at a more appropriate time. Excuse me, Scott. So, are you saying that you was you do, you would accept having those conditions remain in our recommendation, but clarified that they are for the development, they're the building permit process. Uh, yeah, that would make sense because um, unfortunately it would be very difficult for us to, to satisfy the conditions at this time. If you have no development. I, exactly. I think it would be a redundant cost for the developer to, to create the lots. Um, to prepare a servicing plan when we don't know where the house is uh, it just seems like it would be a redundant effort. So if they could be deferred to the building permit stage, I think that would be, would be suitable and 
would make sure that the city was protected and that those issues were addressed. Yeah, I mean, it, all we're trying, I, I expect that all you're trying to do here is to create the lots. And you don't have any development proposals on the lots. But sometimes, that, can but I sometimes we find with the, uh, with the review agencies that they, they go beyond that. They, they want to nail down that you're going to do a servicing plan when you don't even have anything to service. The one concern that uh, we have here with this is that these conditions are from a number of different agencies and departments. We mm -hmm. can't change other department conditions. No, but Madam Chair, sometimes- I'm just, I'm just explaining what, what- Oh, I know. But sometimes, yeah. the, and I've seen them, I see them almost every month, conditions that, that are really not appropriate for the scope of what we're trying to do here. In this case, just to create a couple of lots. Yeah. Uh, may I suggest, to the chair, um, I think maybe we need the, a deferral here so that staff can go back and reword this uh, I was thinking the same, yeah. Yeah, I think we did. And it doesn't need to be a lengthy deferral. Maybe it's just 30 days. Uh, Madam Chair, if I could. Please. Yeah, that I've spoken with my client about that, and um, naturally, time is of the essence with these types of applications. So, we prefer not to seek a deferral. That I did discuss that option with my client, and um, to be frank, we'd prefer to move forward if we could in some fashion. So they'd be accepting of the ten conditions, then, Steve uh, Scott. Uh, well, that's the difficulty. We, we yeah. don't want to defer for 30 days, but we also recognize that some of these conditions are uh, basically impossible for us to satisfy at this point in time. So it would make sense to defer then because you can't. Yes. If it gets approved with 10 conditions, you're still, you're, you're stuck. Yeah. So I think a deferral makes more sense than anything else at this point. And I think it's difficult for this uh, committee to um, arbitrarily go from 10 conditions recommended by staff through agency input to the five conditions that you're suggesting uh, when 30 days will clear it all up. Yes. Yeah. And I, I would be in full agreement with that as well. Just Dawn, I know exactly what you were getting at with before and, and I, I am in agreement, but I think we do need to involve city staff on this. Yeah. All right. Scott, thanks very much for your time. I think we've probably exhausted your time. I'm not even paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, Lisa's just mentioned we could approve and then perhaps come back with a change in conditions. The applicant can propose a change in conditions after it's approved. Uh, well, I think a deferral is going to be quick enough. I think a deferral will, will because it's pretty chair, succinct. I yeah, I'd like to make a motion, please. Yes, go ahead, Gerald. Uh, through the chair, uh, and let's start with B3321. I move that we defer this application for 30 days in order to give staff and the various agencies involved the time to come back and, and uh, uh, present us with uh, reduced conditions. Thank you. Do we have a seconder for that? B33. Through the chair, I second that motion. Thanks very much, Francis. Do we want to have any other chat about that or do we want to move forward for a vote? Pretty straightforward. I think we're all on the same page. I don't want to assume though. All right, if we could have a vote then, all in favor of a deferral for 30 days on B33. Francis? I'm in favor of the deferral Sorry, for 30 days. Sorry, wait, one sec, Lisa's popping up. Oh. I'm sorry, we just got a message that we have a delegate. And you know what? I was just going to, <laughs> I even wrote that down. Sandy, <laughs> don't forget delegate. And sorry. Okay. So we needed the delegate. We have to listen. To we need to hear the delegate first before we will pause the motion. It is on the floor, but we'll vote when we come back from the delegate. Sorry about that. Thanks, Lisa. <laughs> Excuse me. Through you, Madam Chair, I have a Sean McCabe. Sean, are you there? Yes, I'm 
Hello, Sean. Welcome. Thank you for joining us this evening. We appreciate Hi, your Jennifer. time. Thank you for having me, and thank you for uh, giving me the opportunity to, I guess, uh, have our concerns heard. Um, we had tried to look up the uh, application beforehand and had a bit of difficult time. So this is actually the first we've seen it. So I think it makes sense, but I'll let you let me know if it makes sense that it seems like all of our concerns relate more to the development of the lot and what would be going on there. So I don't know if it might be redundant for me to place those concerns when all it is currently is the lot making, creating two more lots. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm currently, I should say, I am the uh, owner of 355 Middle Street. So we do, we are bordering on that lot. But uh, at this time, it might not make sense for me to voice my concerns. But I'll let you answer that. Well, no, it does. It certainly does make sense. And we do appreciate that. And um, we could probably make you feel better by saying there's no request to change the zoning or anything like that on here. Yep. Maybe, Lisa, yeah. you could speak to that. Through the chair, that's correct. Um, the zoning is R5, which is residential, so they're only permitted uh, single detached homes on these lots. Uh, if for some reason they did want to do some type of zone change, that would be a whole other process and everyone would be circulated. Um, but right now, we're, it's still um, remaining the same as R5. Um, and the applicant did say uh, that they are proposing uh, three, um, I guess, three, three homes. Uh, within the application too. That's what, yeah, that's what they thought. You okay with, does that help you understand it a little bit, but you, you will still be always, you'll constantly be kept in the loop on this because you're a neighbor. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I had had a brief conversation with the applicant and I, I was um, aware of what the idea was, but I just, I wasn't hundred percent sure what, uh, what tonight's meeting was going to be approving. But okay. I, but yeah. Now I'm, uh, clear of that and I, I I'm okay with that super well thanks very much we do appreciate you joining us well thanks for letting me uh participate right enjoy your evening thank you you too bye-bye anybody else before I stick my foot in my mouth there Edward Edmund <laughs> see I just did it Thank you, Madam Chair, this, uh, no one else has called. Thank you very much. All right, so we have a vote on the floor for B33, a deferral for 30 days with the 10 conditions. So all in favor, Francis? Madam Chair, <laughs> I, I vote in favor. Of Thank you. Yeah. Gerald? Uh, through the chair, I'm in favor of the deferral. Thank you, and Dawn? Through the chair, I'm in favor of the deferral. Thank you. Moving on to B34, same scenario. If I could have a motion on the floor, please. Madam Chair, I move that uh, B34 be approved with the current 10 staff conditions. And how did we word it before? No, isn't we, aren't we doing a deferral? Oh, no, 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 sorry, not yet right. Oh. Not approved, <laughs> deferred. Deferred for 30 days. It's your coffee cup. Okay. <laughs> All right, defer, so we have it on the floor, 30 days, and a seconder, please. Through the chair, I will second that motion. Thanks very much. Any further comments on this one before we vote? Seeing none, thank you. If we could vote, we'll start with Dawn. Sorry about that, Madam Chair. You're more, hey, <laughs> I've done <laughs> bigger gaffes, don't worry you know, about on it. me. Um, <laughs> Madam Chair, I, 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 I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, and Gerald? Uh, through the chair, I'm in favor of the deferral motion for 30 Thanks. days. Super. And Francis? Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Wonderful. Thanks, carried unanimously. We have a deferral for both on 30 days. Now we're moving to B31, which is 210 Shearson Crescent. And Lisa gets the floor. Thank you. So the applicant is seeking to um, seeking to sever a property for the creation of a new lot. The conveyed parcel uh, is assigned the municipal address of 210 Shearson <coughs> Crescent, while the retained is assigned uh, 220, 230, 240 Shearson Crescent. 
So the conveyed property uh, has an area of 4,620 square meters or 1.14 acres and a frontage of 40 meters and retained is 4.04 acres and a frontage of 986. Um, both parcels uh, meet the, uh, the lot area and frontage in the zoning. So the site is located on the north side of Shearson Crescent, south of Bishop Street North. The property is designated business industrial in the city's official plan and zoned M3 in the zoning bylaw. The site li uh, lies in a municipal urban setting in an area mixed com uh, commercial light industrial land uses. So the lands currently contain two buildings, both industrial. So the property owner, so you can see here, this is 210 Shearson, and it already shows up as a separate parcel. Um, in, in our mapping. So the property owner actually owns uh, 210, 220, 230, and 240 Shearson. So when two or more abutting properties uh, come under a single ownership, the properties may merge in title and become one property. And that's kind of what's been happened here. So as a result, uh, consent is required uh, if this parcel needs to be separated. Mm -hmm. So that's just another image. So again, uh, this is all one ownership. Um, and because it's one ownership, the, the titles may merge and become, become one property. Uh, the proposed creation of a new lot conforms to the uses permitted within the business industrial designation. Staff is of the opinion that the creation of a new lot will not impact the surrounding land uses, uh, given that the subject um, and adjacent lots are currently used for industrial and manufacturing purposes and are of simu similar size and scale. The applicant is also isn't proposing any um, demolitions or new buildings to come up. So staff are of the opinion, oh, sorry, this is um, just a site visit as well. So staff are of the opinion that severing the existing industrial building from the lands is appropriate in the context of the area and for the use of land. No new development is proposed and the existing use is in keeping with the intent of the zoning bylaw, official plan and surrounding, surrounding land use. The function and use of the retained and severed lands will not change as a result of this application. As such, staff does not anticipate any negative impacts as a result of the proposed severance. And that is my presentation. Okay. Any questions of staff? No. Seeing none? No. I want to make sure. Okay, it's a big one. All right, and I would imagine we've got Amanda is joining us this evening. Hi, how are you? Oh, you're already there. Hi. Hi, Amanda. Thanks for joining us. No problem you, at all. You've got five minutes on the clock. Perfect. Thanks so much. Good evening, everyone. My name is Amanda Brennan. I'm with Miller Thompson Waterloo office. I'm the solicitor appearing on behalf of the applicant. Um, as I'm sure has been stated, we're seeking consent to sever the lot municipally known as 210 Shearson. Um, this is an unfortunate case where, uh, you know, the properties become merged at law, having come under common ownership with the adjacent property being uh, 220 to 240 Shearson. Um, our client originally bought the lot with the prospect of development, but at this point in, in um, sort of ownership, it's become superfluous to our clients, so they're, they're looking to sell. Um, we note that for all intents and purposes, the lot is treated as separate and apart from 220 and 240 Shearson, um, the adjacent lot. Um, there's a separate municipal address, separate PIN, separate roll number. Um, we asked the city to reconsider the recommendation that the applicant deposit a reference plan prior to final approval, however. Um, to this point, there's already a perfectly sufficient um, R plan registered on title, being instrument plan number 67R2899. Um, and it's our position that, you know, to require our client to register a new plan, um, that, that would cause them to incur, you know, unnecessary costs and, and expenses. So it's altogether just uh, unnecessary. Um, thank you all for your time. And if you have any other questions, I'm, I'm here and available. Thanks, Amanda. Do we have any no questions? Problem. 
Do we have any questions for Amanda? No. Super. Thanks again, Amanda. Appreciate your time this evening. Madam Chair, I have a question of staff. Absolutely. Fire away, Don. Lisa, where did the requirement for a new registered plan come from? Through the chair, that is just a standard condition that we put on any severance that we do. Um, but I do understand in this scenario, um, given the background of it, that the existing reference plan would probably be sufficient. So if they would be able to at least send us that reference plan, then we'd be able to um, we'd be able to clear that condition. So yeah, it's the, the condition is written to the satisfaction of planning. Sorry, go ahead, Ned. I believe that that reference plan is in fact in the package. So it would a formal submission would be required, but I believe it has been included in the evidence. Not with us. Mm, this had a very large stack of in the initial circulation. I wonder if that was the one I couldn't forward remember. Yes. I, 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 don't, I don't have that anymore. Yeah, and through the chair, if I may, that standard oh. condition lists a lot of items on there, like easements, rights of way that yeah. aren't necessarily applicable. It's it's kind of like um, a blanket um, condition that we have. It is okay. to the, it is required for all severances, but it also is to the satisfaction of the planning department. So uh, basically, if the reference plan is submitted, um, and we see that it clears that condition, then then I don't see right. um, any issue. But uh, the committee, again, is is free to change any wording as they see fit. All right. Thanks, Lisa. Do we have anyone uh, else? Does, does that mean, Lisa, if, Madam Chair, if I might, does that mean that the first condition in the staff report, that prior to final approval, the owner applicant submits a copy of the deposit or reference plan, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, that that could possibly be taken out? Not by our committee. I would I would suggest we leave it in, but the condition yes. will be met because they have the reference plan. So it's a, it's a, it's just the cart before the horse, but we're yeah. fine with leaving it in. They'll meet the condition by supplying us with the current reference. Yes? Okay. Yeah? Okay. All right. Is there anyone else that's speaking to this one? <laughs> Edmund, I'm getting better. You think we met a chair and no one else has called or registered. Wonderful. Thank you. All right. Do we have a motion? I will make a motion uh, through the chair that we approve this application with the three conditions outlined in the staff recommendation report. Thanks, Gerald. A seconder, please. Through the chair, I second that motion. Thanks, Francis. Any further chat? Seeing none, if we can vote then, we're voting on B31 to 10 Shearson Crescent with three conditions. Mm -hmm. All in favor, I'll start with Francis. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, Gerald. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thanks, and Dawn. Through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Wonderful, carried, thank you. Last but not least, B22, 400 Dolph. Okay, thank you. Um, so there was no report with this one. This is a change in conditions that came through. Um, it is a minor change, so it doesn't require circulation. Um, the applicant is seeking a change in conditions to allow um, uh, additional time to satisfy basically the conditions. So uh, the consent came through uh, file B2220 and it expires December 18th, which is in a couple days. Um, let me see here, the conditions, uh, the conditions for the property um, that they're having, that they need more time to clear. Uh, it took a while to figure out um, where all the servicing was um, and what easements would be required. So although they only have three conditions, um, well, technically two, uh, this one just needs more time. Uh, I did wanna mention that the applicant um, has already identified what easements are required and the applicant has already uh, submitted an application ready for the February 2nd meeting. They just weren't able to coordinate um, that, that application with the change in conditions all in one. So this change in conditions, uh, if approved, it would prompt a one year, another one year extension on this application. 
um, which would allow them to get this easement that is needed to basically uh, finalize the severance. So these are the original conditions. Um, and this is kind of what they're looking at here. So you can see a san sanitary storm and water. So what is needed um, is it runs through part four here um, and it runs over part one and two. So over these properties. So this uh, part is being uh, conveyed to, the, to this part of the property and then uh, part one goes this way. So that's why an easement is required because um, you can't have any uh, you can't have any municipal servicing cross property lines. So uh, what the applicant is proposing is that a uh, the change in conditions would be to add that third condition, which is uh, descriptive, that an easement for sanitary and storm be registered on title for part four in favor of part one and part two. Um, so City of Cambridge planning staff recommends approval of the conditions uh, B2220 as amended with the four conditions. Okay, so that's it. If anyone has any questions. I think they're all thinking. Yes, yeah, so maybe I'll go back to here. This this would be what that yeah. change in conditions is. Okay, I think that's fairly straightforward. Any questions of staff? Gerald's, I can still. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm good with it. You're cool? Okay. All right, so do we, uh, we would have a motion to accept. Are you, Madam Chair, the applicant is oh. present. Oh, he is. Oh, I didn't think we needed, okay. Thank you. See? All right. And who might that be? Hello, James. Hello. Hello, James. Thanks for joining us this evening. Yes. You have the floor. You've got five minutes. Okay. To talk thank to you. Us. You're welcome. If you have your YouTube on, can I ask you to mute it or turn it off, please? Yeah, I'll get to the mute. <laughs> there we go. Wonderful. Thanks. Welcome. Uh, thank you very much, Madam Chair. Uh, yes, my name is Richard, initial J. Um, I've been uh, designated as agent uh, for the supplementary matter uh, by Canadian National. As staff has advised, we're uh, just trying to pull together the various pieces it was a little convoluted to identify the location of the servicing um, as con but between uh, uh, private uh, locates and city engineering. I think we now have all of that under control. It's just a case of trying to meet the timelines and by uh, modifying the condition, it will give uh, the applicant uh, sufficient time to pull the pieces together uh, to get the approvals in place. All right, thank you. Questions of the app of the agent? I, I beg your pardon. Oh, I'm just wondering if, if our committee has any questions for you. Oh, yourself. I, I'm sorry. Yes. Okay. No, that's quite all right. It's our, our volume seems quite low tonight. Well, it doesn't look like, I said, like we have any. Thank you very much for okay. joining us. And, I, I, um, I will just told. I, I assume you'll put this to a vote. Uh, put, yes, put the votes. Vote yep, vote. It's forthcoming. Thanks very much. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. All right, so now, is there anybody else speaking to this one? Are you, Madam you? Chair, no one else has phoned or been scheduled. Wonderful, thank you. All right, if we could have a motion on this one. Anyone? Can some, somebody? <laughs> Yeah, We're I'm sorry. We get tired and it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's nine. It, it, it's it, it's after nine o'clock, so oh, I appreciate okay. that, Madam Chair. Okay. All right. So it's B22, and we uh, it is amended with the four conditions. So if we could have a motion on the floor. Well, through the chair, I recommend uh, approval of the uh, 
of the um, amended conditions for B22. Thank you. Seconder. And I'm sure I second that motion. Thanks very much, Don. All right, and if we could have a vote all in favor of B22, approving it with the four conditions as amended. All in favor, Dawn? Uh, Madam Chair, I'm in favor. Thank you. Gerald? Uh, through the chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thanks, and Francis? Madam Chair, I'm in favor of the motion. Thank you, carried unanimously. Well, thank you very much, Madam Chair. And You're committee. very welcome. You're very welcome. Thanks for joining Good us. Good evening. Good evening then. Bye-bye. This concludes the applications for this evening. We now move on to the next item on the agenda of other business. And that's Lisa. Yeah, just a few uh, OLT updates. Um, 527 Equestrian Way scheduled for March 14th. I believe that was a secondary unit as well. And decision came in for 219 Hardcastle. I believe that has been circulated to the committee. Um, that, uh, that decision came November 8th and that was approved and that was a secondary unit as well. Okay. And Madam Chair, that, that has been circulated to the committee as of uh, about 30 seconds ago. <laughs> <laughs> it, it still has though, right? It still has. Madam Chair, I was going to say that, that, yeah, I hadn't seen that, so I guess I will see. <laughs> Sorry, I spoke too soon. That's okay. But, but, but it does bring up an important point, Lisa, is that we keep asking and want assurance that when the tribunal makes their decisions and puts them in writing, that we are circulated so we can understand what's going on. Although I think we're seeing a pretty clear pattern here. Yeah, through the chair, I think we, uh, at the last meeting, we agreed that we would attach them to the agendas rather than circling them as they come in, they would be um, attached to the, to the agendas. More logical. Yeah. You're not optimistic. Just so we don't have a flurry of emails. Um, and so perhaps we can maybe, if there's any discussions they're had at the meeting and not not off the, off the uh, offline. Right, right. Thank you. So th this 219 Hardcastle, uh, what, uh, what uh, month did this application come before us? Do you recall? Uh, through the chair, I can look it up real quick here. And the November 8th date, I'm not sure, Ned, if you know, but sometimes the, um, the OLT will have their date and the decision isn't issued that same day. There's been times where it's been like a month or even a few days after. Um, so I don't know when that decision was actually, if that's the, the date the decision was issued. For you, Madam Chair, it would be very unusual for a member of the OLT to give an oral decision. Uh, they would virtually always reserve decision uh, and issue a written sometime after. Mm -hmm. So through the chair, Hardcastle, uh, 219 Hardcastle came, I believe it was the, it would have been the March 2020, let me just, okay. yeah, March 10th, 2020, Committee of Adjustment okay. meeting. Okay, thanks. And with Thank your you. indulgence, that was heard by the OLT on September 14th, and the decision was issued on November 8th. Thank you. Thank you. And they were, uh, so that was a minimum lot area of 305 square meters when 450 is required um, and a lot frontage of 8.9 meters where 11 is required and it was R6 zone. Okay. All right. That's what it is. Yeah, so it'd be worth a read, um, that decision. Um, yes, I am, through Madam Chair, I am prepared to, give a brief summary of the application if you wish, but I think it does speak for itself. It's a yes, relatively yes. short document. I think we know what it's going to say. Ed. Yeah, we, and it's late in the night. Yes, <laughs> all right. Is there any other business then? Uh, I just wanted to add on here, we didn't really address. Oh. Um, so Amal did resign a couple of meetings ago. She wasn't able to come to her last meeting, okay. um, but Sandy, um, you have put in your resignation. Um, thank you. And I, oh, and I did share that with the 
with the group. I had shared that after I'd sent it to you a few days after I'd shared it with them. Okay. Yeah. Um, so you will be, I guess tomorrow will be your last, last meeting as right. chair. So yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for, for all your time, um, and your work on the committee. You've been a really oh, great you. chair. Um, and we will definitely miss you. Mm -hmm. Um, thank you. Yeah. I just want to say we appreciate, appreciate that. Well, thanks. <laughs> That's very kind of you. Why don't we keep all this, keep all the nice stuff for t till tomorrow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. So do no, I have a motion? Do I have a motion for adjourn? Oh wait, was there something else, Lisa? Uh, just very last item. I just want our next meet. Well, next meeting's tomorrow. Um, I, I was going to say that a new chair could be voted in tomorrow, but we are going to hold that off till the next meeting, just in case uh, we do yeah. have new committee members. Oh, super. Okay, that makes sense. Well, no, that we are down. Me, but... We are down. We will be down too. So yeah. Okay. Okay. Is that, right. active? Is that active, Lisa, the search? I'm not sure. I have to follow up with clerks again. I'm not sure when the striking committee meets, but uh, they are aware of our two vacancies. Okay, thank you. All right, if I could then have a motion for adjournment. <sighs> Whoever just had that big sigh could probably do it. <laughs> well, through the chair, I, I move that we adjourn. <laughs> thank you, a seconder. It I second that, Madam Chair. I got Francis first. There you go, Don. I'll second that. Francis. <laughs> okay. All right. Thank you, folks. That's All it right. for the evening. Thank you. And we'll see you tomorrow night. Wow. Same bat channel, same bat time.